All praises to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called Njol, the enemy of God. Njol, the enemy of God. So it's a beautiful topic this day. Let me share my screen so we can read the definition of what this means. Okay. All praises to the Lord. All praises. Okay. Okay. I need you to read that definition right there. Okay. Njol. The definition of mcholo, mcholo, basically means state. Where, where are you reading from? Where are you reading from? Reading from a frictionary, a frictionary, mm -hmm. the definition of mcholo. Mcholo basically means dating. Basically it's means what? Basically means dating. So mcholo basically means dating. Jolo means dating. Go ahead. It's derived from Ukjola, which means to date. Uh -huh. Therefore, Mjolo is the act of dating. Ukjola. Mjolo is the act of dating. Okay, let's see Ukjola. Okay, read that. Read that definition now. Reading from Afri Africanary, the definition of mm -hmm. Ukjola. Go ahead. Ukjola is to date someone or being in a relationship. So all of this, what we're reading here, this is all hordom here, okay? This is all hordom, okay? Now, when you are in the, when you are participating in the act of ukjola or mjol, okay? This is what you are referred to when you are a sister. Watch this. Okay, the, Reading from F, reading from a fictionary, the Go definition ahead. of Mugwanti. Mu what? Mugwanti. Mugwanti. Mu <laughs> oh boy, let me come down. Read that again. <laughs> Re reading from a, fi a fictionary, the definition of Mugwanti. Mugwanti. Mm. Esepitori term, sipitori term for a loose girl or sphere. Read that again. So this thing must marinate. Okay, go ahead. Mokwanti. Mm -hmm. A sipitori term for a loose girl or sphere. So Mokwanti is a loose girl or sphere. Okay, let's see. Read that definition now. Reading from a, a frictionary, the definition mm. of sphere. Go ahead. Sphere, the Cassie term for a hole or hole. Read that again. Sphere, the Cassie term for a hole or hole. It says the Cassie term for a hole or a hole. Okay. Read that. This girl kiss fairy. This girl kiss fairy because they are participating in Jolo. Okay. Now watch this. Sfebenist. Read that. Sfebenist. Read it. The definition of Sfebenist. Mm -hmm. Reading from a frictionary. Go ahead. Sfebenist. A sfebe mm. that hides behind being a part. A sfebe. That hides behind being a but do sphere. Being is a, a sphere that hides behind being a sphere. Okay, that's really what they actually want to mean there. Go ahead. Spherenist, a sphere that hides behind being a sphere, but do sphere things behind closed doors. But they do sphere things behind closed doors. So, such as some of our sisters, you know, they hide behind long dresses. But mentally, they are still in this feminist state of mind. Keep going. Read them. Read that thing for me. That, mm. one, that one is just pretending to be a feminist. Mm. She actually is a feminist. Read it again. That one is just pretending to be a feminist. She actually is a as feminist. 
That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay, I'm sorry. Read that again. I'm looking for something. Feminist. That one is just pretending to be a feminist. She mm. actually is a feminist. She actually is a feminist. Okay. Now, watch this. Um, let's get. Yes, get that. Get the definition of uh, scalem. The definition of scalem, reading from mm. a frictionary. Go ahead. Scalem. A scalem is a South African term for a tzotzi. Mm. Rascal, thief, crook, all the buff things. You see that all the buff things. Read again, scalem. Is scalem. Read it. Scalem. A scalem is a South African term for a tzotzi. Rascal. Mm. Thief, crook, all the buff things. So this actually skelem is a is a what? A skelem is a homanger. Because a homanger is a skelem, he's a rascal, he's a thief, he's a crook. Okay, he's got gain. You see that thing? A skelem is got gain. Now, watch this. Okay. Now tonight's topic is called njolo. Okay, njolo. The enemy of the enemies of God. When you participate in Mjolo physically and spiritually, you are an enemy of God. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 41, verse 16. Let's start there. Strike 41, verse 16. Let's read that thing. Okay. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 41, verse 16. Go ahead. Therefore. Be shamefaced according to my word. Read. For it is not good to retain all shamefacedness. Mm. Neither is it altogether approved in everything. Because sometimes you can what? You can retain, you can retain shamefacedness because you're dealing with sin. You understand? The Lord says it's not good to do that. You retain all shamefacedness because of your sin. Not because... You are walking uprightly, mm -mm, but because of your sin, you are ashamed of your sin. So you don't want to get rid of it. And because you don't want to get rid of it, that means you are actively participating in it. That's what the Lord is saying right here. Read it again, verse 16. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 41, verse 16. Therefore, be shamefaced according to my word. Mm -hmm. For it is not good to retain all shamefacedness. Neither is it altogether approved in everything? Now watch the next verse. Go ahead. Be ashamed of whoredom before father and mother mm. and of a lie before a prince and a mighty man. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, be ashamed of whoredom before father and mother. So when you are participating in Ujolo, Ujolo, you are not ashamed of whoredom before your father and your mother. You understand? You are not ashamed of being Mugwanti, spiritually or physically. When I say spiritual, I'm talking about in this truth. Physically, I'm talking about our sisters out there in the world that are shameless daughters out there. You understand? Dealing with all, dealing all, dealing with all these no good Negroes. Okay? This Kelen. Okay? Read that again, verse 17. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 41, verse 17. Go ahead. Be ashamed of whoredom before father and mother. Mm. And of a lie before a prince and a mighty man. And of a lie before a prince and a mighty man. Watch this, because we are the princes of the Most High God. And we are mighty men too. Understand that thing. Now watch this, because the people that participate in Mjolo is people that are not taught correctly. Is people that are not raised up in stable family homes. We used to be in there. You understand? We used to we, we used to participate in that. But once we had the word of God, we brought changes to our lives. We applied God's commandments. We humbled down to what this Bible is saying. That's why we can speak with so much boldness because we used to be in that lifestyle. Watch this. Get the book of Ecclesiastes, okay? 7.23. Let's start there. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 23. I want you to read that thing. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verses 23. Go ahead. Give ear, my son, 
no, no. receive my right and what verse you have? not. No, 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 no. Which, which book are you in? Apologies, sir. There was six. Okay, Sarat 7, verse 23. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Has thou children? Instruct them and bow right. down their neck from their youth. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, has thou children? Instruct them. Do we have children? Of course we do. All of you coming in here, you are children. Okay? It says, has thou children? Yes, we do. It says, you must instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. Watch this. Get that in Romans so we understand how the children must be instructed. Okay? The reason why you see our brothers and sisters in the world, you see them on these social media platforms, they're participating in Ujolo is because they are not what? They are not being taught God's commandments. They are not being raised up the right way according to the scriptures. That's where we come in in the spirit of Christ. Read that. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Okay, come on. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Go ahead. And know it's his will mm. and approve it the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. Being instructed out of the law. So do we have children? Yes. The children are instructed out of God's laws because the laws of God does the milk, okay? You must be instructed out of God's commandments. Jump down to verse 20. Watch this. Read. An, in an instructor of the foolish. So now we are the instructor of the foolish because children are foolish. They need to be instructed. Children don't know anything. Go ahead. A teacher of babes. A teacher of babes. Because babes don't know anything. They need to be taught God's laws. The milk. Go ahead. Which has the form of knowledge and mm -hmm. of the truth in the law. And of the truth in the law. So you, the children will be instructed out of God's laws. Why? Because they are foolish. So the leadership will bring out what? The laws, the statutes and commandments to teach and educate the children so children grow up the right way. You understand? In the spirit of Christ. So they can what? They can be able to be ashamed of whoredom before father and mother. Do you understand? Now, let's go back. Let's go back to Sirach 7, verse 23 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 23. Go ahead. Has thou children? Instruct them and bow mm. down their neck from their youth. Meaning what? You must teach them from when they are young. Remember, when you come into this truth, what did Christ command all of us? Get that in Matthew 18, verse 3. Okay? Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. Because when we come into this truth, this is what Christ commanded. Do you understand? Because as long as you think you are grown, you're not going to learn anything. You're not going to grow. You are not going to be taught. Do you understand? You need to acknowledge that you need to be taught as a child. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can be 20 years old. You can be 25. You can be 30. When you walk through these doors, you are zero days old. Understand that. Okay. Matthew 18, start at verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 1. Go ahead. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Go ahead. And Jesus called the little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. You see what Christ did? Christ, instead of responding to them like that, he said, you know what? I'm going to show you. I'm going to use a carnal example to show you what I mean. That you must, how do you become great in the kingdom of heaven? You understand? He called a child, a little child. Go ahead. And said, verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see that thing? It says, except, except ye be converted and become as little children. That's why he called a little child before in the midst of them, to sit, to stand in the midst of them, so he can give them examples. He says, you must be like this little child. Why? Because children... Children are, are, are easy to receive instruction because their mind is still what? They're still soft. You understand? Children are eager to learn. 
So Christ says, when you come into this truth, that's the mindset you have to have. Don't come in with the, I know something. No, you don't know nothing. That you, once you move like that, guess what? Christ says, you're going to be great in the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because guess what? You're not going to back up against the scriptures. You're not going to fight it. You're not going to, Satan is not going to be sitting on your right hand. Okay, go ahead. Verse four, read. Whosoever shall therefore humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You see that thing? It says, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child right here, it says the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Because children, when you say, listen, that color right there, the sky is blue. The child is going to say, yes, father. The child is, the, 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 the sky is blue. And then you understand, when you, you teach the child, listen, that's a dog right there. Yes, mother, that's a dog right there. You understand? The child is not going to say, mm, no, that's a donkey. No, the child is not going to say that. Why? Because the children, they are eager to learn. They don't know anything. They, they know it within themselves that I don't know nothing. They know it. You don't have to tell them that they don't know. They already know that they don't know anything. Do you understand? Watch this. Because what we need to understand is that, give me that in Deuteronomy 31 real quick. Okay? Because the Lord commanded Moses this thing when he brought all the families together. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 9. Let's start there. You know what? Mm, let's just get to the point. Okay? Read verse... Verse 11. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 11. Go ahead. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place mm -hmm. which he shall choose. That's Jerusalem. Read. Thou shalt read the law before all Israel in their hearing. You see what God is commanding? He says, thou shalt read. Thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Because they must hear. You must read it before them. That's what's going on right now in the classroom. The laws of God is being read before you. Go ahead. In your hearing. Okay, read. Gather the people together. Men and women and children. And the stranger that is within thy gates. That they read. may hear and that they may learn. And fear the Lord your God to observe, to do all the words of this law. You see what he's saying? That they may hear and that they may learn. Once you, the, the, the key is you must hear. Once you hear, you must learn what you hear. It must sink in your spirit and fear. Because the things that you are learning is the laws of God so you can learn to fear him. Because that's the first thing you must do. Fear the Lord your God, not love him. That's the first thing is you must fear the Lord. Okay, it says, and observe to do all the words of this law. You understand? Watch the next verse. Remember, Moses was commanded to gather the people together, men, women, and children. So these are families here. You understand? They're building blocks for nation building. Go ahead. And that their children, which have not known anything, Stop may right hear. And that their children, which have not what? And that their children, which have not known anything. And that their children, which have not known anything. So what is the Lord, what is the most High God teaching Moses to teach us? He's teaching us that children don't know anything. So guess what? What we read in Matthew 18, okay? Go back to Matthew 18, verse 3 again. Matthew 18. And that their children, which have not known anything. Okay? Go back. Matthew 18, verse 3. We were to go. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 3. Go ahead. And say, verily I say unto you, except mm -hmm. ye be converted and become as little children, Read. Ye, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you are not, con you know, you're, if you're not going to humble down like a little child who doesn't know anything, because that's the key. The children don't know anything. You understand? You understand? They don't know anything. He says, Christ says, if you humble yourself as a little child, he says, then you'll enter into the kingdom because you'll be taught and you'll receive that which you are taught. You'll learn that which you are taught. You'll apply that which you are taught because you don't know anything. You see that thing? That's what the Lord is commanding us right there. Okay, go ahead. 
whosoever they fall shall humble himself as this little child. Mm -hmm. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You see what Christ is saying? If you humble yourself as a little child, he says, you're going to be greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 15, the last verse. Prover you know, I started verse 32. Proverbs 15, 32, you're going to read 32 and 33. Okay, watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verses 32. No, 15, 1, 5. Proverbs 15, verse 32. Come on. Excuse me, sir. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verses 32. He that oh. refuses instruction. Ray, come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 32. He Ray. that refuses instruction despises, despises his own soul. You see, stop right there. Remember what we read in, in Sarak 7. It says, do you as thou children instruct them? How must we instruct the children out of God's commandments like we read in Romans 2, verse 18 and 20? Here the Lord is teaching us, says, he that refuses, refuses instruction because children are, 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 are instructed out of God's laws. That's what we instruct here in soldiers of Christ. We teach God's commandments. He says, he that refuses God's laws, he says, you despise your own soul. You hate yourself. That's what God is saying right there. You hate instruction. I'll give an example. I give you an instruction. You understand? Both men and women, and this is the sisters and the men, you are given instruction. You agree to do it, right? But you don't do it. You don't say nothing. You don't communicate. You hate yourself. You understand? That's what you need to understand. That's the state of mind you need to understand what you are in. Because when you refuse to execute that instruction, you are not hating me. You understand? You're hating yourself so much so that you hate yourself to do that to yourself. I hope you men and women understand that thing. Okay? Read that again. Verse 32. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 32. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. Read. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Because, and you're going to get understanding from the laws of God, because God's laws gives you sense. Okay, next verse. Read on. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Go ahead. For honor is humility. Before you can receive honor, you must humble down to what this Bible is saying. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Before honor is humility. Before you can receive honor, you must humble down to what this Bible is saying. Meaning what? Whatever the Bible says, you're going to do it. You're going to follow the lamb, whithersoever he goeth. Do you understand that? You're not going to make excuses. You're not going to twitch like a robot. You'll just get it done. You're not going to be saying, no, because I was unable to do X, Y, and Z. It's always, it's always something with you. You don't believe this book. You don't believe it. You understand? You're just faking the funk. Okay? You're just a waste of space. You must move out the way so that the Lord can send productive spirits up in here. Okay? Now watch this. Go back to Matthew 18, verse 4. Matthew 18 and verse 4. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 4. Read. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, mm -hmm. the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You see that thing? Now watch this. Um, read on. Come on. Verse 5. Watch this. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receive it me. You see what Christ is saying? It says, and whoso shall receive, receive one such little child in my name, receive it me. Because guess what? When we receive a child, meaning what? You must what? You must humble down like a child will humble themselves down. That's what Christ is saying. When you humble yourself down, we're going well, to receive you. Why? Because we're going to have joy in educating you, delivering the gospel of Christ unto you. Then Christ says, we are receiving him. We are, how are we receiving him? The, his spirit will be, will be what? Will be poured up upon us. That's what Christ is saying right there. Okay? Now watch this. Give me, uh, go back to Sarak 7, okay? Sarak 7 verse 23. Watch this. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 23. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 23. Read. Has thou children? Instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. He says, bow down their neck from their youth. Because from their youth, what's going on with children and at the, in their youth? Watch this. You know what? Give me Genesis 8.21 while I look for this. Get Genesis 8.21. The book of Genesis, chapter 8, verses 21. Ray, come on. And the Lord smelled the sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will Ray. not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Mm -hmm. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Yes, there is one. Neither. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. You see what God is saying? He says, because the imagination of man's mind is evil from their youth. You see that thing right there? That's why it says, bow down their neck from their, when they were what? In their youth, when, from when they were young. That's what the Lord is saying right there. He says, bow down their neck from their youth, because in their youth, he says, what? He says, because the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. That's why it's necessary for what? For us to bow down your neck from one when you are still young. So when you come into this truth, yeah, I don't care how your physical age is, you must humble down to what this Bible is saying. You must behave yourself like a little child, like a small baby again, so you can learn. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Your neck must be bowed down from your youth. As you're coming in like a little child that Christ was talking about. Get Sarah chapter 17, verse 16. I found the precept now. Sarah 17, verse 16. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, verse 16. Go ahead. Every man from his youth is given to evil. You see what God is saying? Every man from his youth is given to evil. That's why it says we must bow down your neck from your youth. Because the mind is filled with nothing but evil. Okay, go ahead. Neither could they make to themselves fleshly hearts for stone. He says you cannot make yourself fleshly heart for stone. Meaning what? You cannot turn your stony heart into a flesh, into a fleshly heart, because you are always occupied in evil. What good can come of it? Nothing. There is no good that can come of it. That's what the Lord is saying. Get that in Sarah 12 verse 3. Okay. Sarak 12 and verse 3. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes of the 12 verse 3. Go ahead. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. You see what God is saying? He says, there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no arms. Okay, that's a different topic right there. But the point is, the Lord is saying, listen, from your youth, you are given to evil. That's what he's saying. From our youth, we are given to evil. And because of that, we need to humble down like a little child so we can be educated. That's what he's saying right there. So go back to Sarah 7, okay? Ecclesiastes 7, verse 23. Read again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 23. Go ahead. Has thou children, instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. You see that thing? Has thou children, instruct them. And we must bow down their neck from their youth. Why? Because every, everyone is given, his mind is given to evil from their youth. That's why your neck must be bowed down from, their, from your youth. Go ahead. Hold on. You know what? Give me to Tommy 6. Get to Tommy chapter 6 verse 1. You must be bowed down from your youth from one, while you're still a child. Okay? Or when you come into this truth, yeah, you physically, you are older, but you're still a boy. You're still a, you're still a girl. Okay? Deuteronomy 6 and 1. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 1. Go ahead. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, mm. that he might do them in the land whither he go to possess it. You see what he's saying? So God is giving us commandments, statutes, and judgments 
Meaning what? The judgment for breaking these laws. Go ahead. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I commanded thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. You see what he's saying? So these commandments, these statutes and the judgments that are commanded for us to, that are taught unto us in verse one, the Lord says, we must make what? We must teach them to our sons, to our sons, sons, meaning our grandkids, all the days of our life, that, they, that our days may be prolonged. Jump down to verse seven now. Watch this. Read verse seven. The book of, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter six, verse seven. Read. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, Read. and when thou walkest by the way, Come on. and when thou lowest down, and when thou risest up. You see what he's saying? We must teach God's laws diligently unto our children. So you guess what you must do? It means we must constantly be what? The laws of God must constantly be brought out all the time. Whether it's a simple conversation, you might think it's not a simple conversation. Every conversation is governed by God's commandments. You understand? Your speech, your conduct, the things you say, how you say them must be what? Must be based on as it is written. And guess what? That's how you are going to grow in this truth. You understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. He says, you so, you so must talk of them when what? When thou sittest in thine house. Okay, when we just sitting, we go over scripts. It says, when thou walkest by the way, we traveling wherever with the scripts. It says, when thou liest down, before you go to sleep, that's why we have class at night. You understand? And then when thou rises up, what was the instruction? Study in the morning. Get your mind right, get your spirit correct. So the whole day, you can be in the spirit, okay? That's not a suggestion, that's a command. Some of you follow it, some of you don't follow it because you hate yourself. Give me Sirach 30 verse one. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 and verse one. And what we're reading here, the command that you was given is written here, right here. That's what we just read here in verse seven, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 30, no, no, chapter three. No, is that what I want? Yeah, 30 verse 1. Read what you got. It's like 30 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30 verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that loveth his son causeth him oft to fill the rod. Read. That he may have joy of him in the end. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, because we love you, we're going to often to call, we're going to make sure that you often fill the rod. What is the rod? The Bible, the scriptures. Okay, get that in um, in Psalms. Get that in Psalms 23 real quick. It says, he that loveth his son, it says he will what? He that loveth his son causeth, causeth him oft, meaning often, to fill the rod. Watch this. Get that in Psalms 23, okay? Psalms chapter 23. And verse four, read that. Psalm 23, verse four. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse four. Go ahead. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. A rod is something that is used for correction, a staff is something that is used for support. So it says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod, what is the rod and the staff that comforts us? Get that in Romans 15 verse four. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Okay, Romans 15 verse four, read that. The book of Romans, chapter 15 verses four. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written mm. for our learning. Right. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that thing? Through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So the rot and the stuff that comforts us is the scriptures. The scriptures is what's going to bring us comfort 
The scriptures is the road that brings forth comfort to us. Get that in Proverbs 22, 15. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Okay. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Read. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Read. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. You see what God is saying? But the rod is foolishness is bound, is bound. When something is bound, that means what? Is embedded in there, is found in there. You understand? Is found a home in your spirit. Foolishness, which is breaking God's laws. If you read 1 Samuel 13, verse 13. Yes, says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. The rod of correction is the staff that will comfort you. The laws of God, the milk. Okay, Proverbs 29, verse 15. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 15. Mm -hmm. The rod and reproof give wisdom. Read. But a child left to himself, bringing his mother to shame. You see what the Bible is saying? The rod and reproof will give wisdom, okay? Because the rod is what's going to comfort you, is what's going to drive the foolishness out of you. It says, by a child that is left to themselves, they're going to bring their mother to shame. You see that thing? Because when you are given correct instruction, you don't follow it, we're going to leave you alone. Then what, guess what's going to happen? You become a shame before us. You understand? And we're not going to allow you to become a shame before us. You're going to have to, we have to get you, get rid of you from us. You understand? Because we don't want your infection to infect all of us. Understand that thing. Okay? So let's go back. Okay? Go back to Sirach chapter 30 verse 1. Come on. The book of so what, I, what, what I need you what I need you all to understand is that what Christ said when he said in Matthew 18, he meant that thing that you must be like a child. You understand? That was do you have children? Yes, instruct them. How do you get instructed here? Out of God's laws, precept upon precept, line upon line. Yeah, a little and there a little. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes 30, verse 1. Read. He that loveth his son causeth him oft to fill the rod. Read. That he may have joy of him in the end. Because we're going to have joy of you in the end. You understand? You're not going to see it right now, but if, if you apply the counsel, you apply the correction, you apply the instructions you are given, we're going to have joy of you in the end. And guess what? You will have joy of you in the end. And guess what? When you have kids, guess what? You're going to have joy of your kids also. Because a lot of you, you don't think about that. You don't think about the children that will come forth. You don't think about the behavior and the, be the habits, the traits that your children will take from you. You don't think about that, okay? And I'm not just talking about um, the married couple. No, I'm talking about all of you. Because all of you, you're going to get married one day. And when you do, guess what? If you were the black ashy demon, didn't want to follow instruction, your children will take that because they're going to be looking at you. You see that thing? Okay, come on. Verse 2, read. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him. Read. And shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. You see what the Bible is saying? So we must chastise you. The Lord is not, he didn't say, no, time out, Timmy. No, that's not what we're reading here. There's no time out here. It says, he that chastiseth his son. So you must be chastised in the word of God. It says, shall have joy of, of him, in a, a joy of him, and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. Because you're not going to be an embarrassment. Okay, go ahead. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. We're going to grieve our enemies that hate us because our enemies, they use our children against us. Okay, come on. And before his friend, he shall rejoice of him. Before his friends, we will rejoice of you because we see you the way you conduct yourself. You are respectful. You listen. You pay attention. You understand. You follow instruction. Every godly discourse, you follow that. Go ahead. Though his father die, yet he is as though as he were not dead. Great. For he hath left one behind him 
that is like himself. You see what God is saying? Though his father die, he says, yet he says, though as he were not dead, because you're going to continue on what your father taught you. You understand? You're going to continue it. You're not going to stop. You're going to say, no, my father is gone now. I can do whatever the hell I want. No, no, no. You continue to honor him. Okay? Even when he's gone, he says, for he had left one behind him like that is like himself. You see that thing? That's an honor right there. That's why now we're patterning ourselves after our forefathers that came before us. Our forefather Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Nahum, Moses, Nehemiah, Ezra, so on and so forth. Okay, come on. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. Right. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. He was not afraid to die because he knew that, you know what? I've left an avenger. He's going to be an avenger against my enemies. Do you understand? Go ahead. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies. Come on. And one that shall re requite kindness to his friends. You see what the Bible is saying? And the one that shall requite kindness to his friends. Why? Because his father or his mother, they taught him. They taught her. You understand? So now he's not an embarrassment. Okay. Now watch this. Jump down to verse, read verse seven now. I want you to read verse seven. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes 30 verse seven. Go ahead. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds. Mm. And his bowels will be troubled at every cry. You see what the Bible is saying? If we make too much of you, guess what's going to happen? It will be a disservice. If I cuddle you, it will be a disservice. That's what the Lord is going into. When he says, he that maketh too much of his son, if you are being cuddled, it will be a disservice to you. You understand? So nobody going, I'm not going to cuddle any one of you, especially you brothers. You are not going to be cuddled, okay? I'm going to talk to you like men. You must be raised up to become men, leaders of Israel. So you see that? It says, and his bowels will be troubled at every cry. I don't want to be always just worried. Oh, not that brother again. You understand? Not that sister. When your name comes up, guess what? Everybody's just frowning upon. That wicked Negro right there. He's not getting himself right. You understand? Soldier can't get right. You see that thing? Sister cannot get right. That's your say name. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 9. Okay, read verse 9. The book of Ecclesiastes 30, verse 9. Go ahead. Conquer thy child, and he shall make thee afraid. Brave. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. You see what the Bible is saying? To conquer means to play, meaning to cuddle. He says, conquer your child, he shall make thee afraid. Because now you are emboldening him. You are winking at his follies. You are not correcting it, like we read in Proverbs. 22, 15, 29, 15, okay? He says he's going, they're going, to, he's going to bring you to heaviness. Okay, read on. Verse 10, come on. Laugh not with him. Mm. Let thou have sorrow with him. Really? And lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end. You know, this child right here, you're not going to have joy of this child in the end, like we read in verse 1. The one that gets corrected. Because the one that gets corrected in verse 1, this is the flip side of verse 1 what that we just read in Sarah 30. Okay, he says, love not with him, lest thou have sorrow with him. Because if you love with him, that means you're going to have sorrow with him. Now you're going to be saying, oh, I'm sorry, little Nunu. So now he's not learning nothing. You are emboldening him with, in his sin. You understand? He says, lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end. You understand that? Read on. Verse 11. Come on. Give him no liberty in his youth. Mm. And we do not at his follies. You see what the Bible is saying? He says, don't give him liberty. Give him no liberty. You see what that means right there? He says, no liberty. That's why some of you councils has come out. You must what? Make sure you clean your house. You wash. You do all these things. Get busy. You understand? We're making sure that you're not idle. You don't have too much freedom on your hands because you're going to go do some evil stuff. So that's why it says, give him no liberty in his youth and wink not at his follies. You see that thing? Watch this. Now, jump up to this eight. Okay? We still did, this is the flip side. You understand? Verse one through six, 
is going into what is going into that child that pays attention, that child that listens, that child that happens down to what this Bible is saying, that child that honors their father and their mother. You understand? Verse seven down is talk about that wicked, stubborn, rebellious, abominable child. That's what we are reading about here. Okay, read verse eight. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, of 30, verse 8. Read. And horse not broken becometh it strong. Mm. And a child left to himself will be woeful. You see that thing? A child that is left to themselves, they are going to be woeful. They are going to self destruct. They want to destroy themselves. You understand? Because when we give instruction, you don't follow it. You are self willed. You are woeful. So, are we going to allow you to do the evil among us? No, 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 no. If you want to be evil, no problem. Just get the hell out. You understand? Just leave. Don't be here. Don't be sitting your funky behind up in here. Just keep it moving. You understand? I don't see why you'll be here, but you hate instruction. Why would you be here? Men and women too. You understand? Why would you be among us? Because back in the day, how did we get rid of the evil? You got stoned to death to get rid of the evil among us. So today we cannot do that. All we can do is we get rid of you. He said, you have to go. You got to go. You can't be among us. You need to get your mind right. You're not ready to be among us. Do you understand? Because you are threatening everything that we are trying to build here. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 8. And horse not broken becometh headstrong. And a child left to himself will be woeful. Come down to verse 12. Come on. Bow down his neck while he's young. Pray. And beat him on the sides while he is a child. No, no, give him a time out. And beat him on the sides while he is a child. You see that thing? It says beat him on the sides while he is a child. Right now, because physically you are grown, so we cannot spank you. We will spank you with the word of God, though. You're going to get a proper spanking, a lashing. You understand? He says, what? He says, bow down his neck while he's young and beat him on the sides while he's a child. That's why, like, you know, we've got younger daughters in the truth. Yes, we can spank them on the sides because they are at that age where they, we can still do that. But those of you that are grown, we use the scriptures more so to spank you. You don't listen, you can get the hell out. It's very simple. Okay, go ahead. Lest you were stubborn and be disobedient unto thee, and so bring sorrow to thine heart. You see that thing? We don't want none of this to happen. Go ahead, verse 13. Read. Chastise thy son mm. and hold him to labor. Go ahead. Lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. Because we don't want your lewd behavior to be an offense unto us. That's why it says, hold him to labor. Jump up to verse 11. So we read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 11. Give him no liberty in his youth mm. and wink not at his follies. You see that thing? Because when, you, when we give you liberty, we are winking at your follies because in your liberty, you're going to do evil things. You understand? You're going to do some evil stuff. Get that in Sarah 33, verse 27. Okay, read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 27. Read. Send him to labor, that he be not idle, for idleness teacheth much evil. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, we must send you to labor. You must always be busy. It says that he be not idle, because idleness teacheth much evil. Idleness will teach evil. Okay, read on. Verse 28. Set him to work as is fit for him. Meaning as it is good for him. Go ahead. If he be not obedient, put on more heavy fetters. You see what the Bible is saying? The Bible says, if you're not obedient, it says we must add more yoke upon you. We must give you more work to do. Okay, you don't want to do this? No problem. Over and above that, this is your bonus. You're going to do that, 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 and the other. Because you didn't want to do this little thing right here. We're going to add more stuff unto you. That's in the Bible. Now you're going to have more heavy stuff to do. 
because you didn't want to do that simple thing that you was given. Why? Because if you are going to be stubborn in that small thing, surely you are going to be stubborn in big things. So we're going to drown you in work to do. You don't do the work, you don't get no privileges because the Mosai does, the Mosai works like that. We lost all our privileges when we broke his commandments. Now we are, where, where are we? In South Africa. Yeah. That's what's going on right now. Living in the Mkukus, the ghettos, Kokas. Mm? Surige is always bursting. The power supply is always blowing up because why? There's illegal connections on the electricity. Listen, there's a whole lot of evil that is going on in our community. You understand? Because of what? Because we broke the commandments of the Most High God. You understand? So now we are in the conditions that we're in right now. Get Matthew 15, verse 3. Matthew 15, verse 3. Because all these characteristics that we're reading here, these are the characteristics of people that are taking place in Mujolo. Because guess what? Everything that we read here goes against what? The commandment that says, honor your father and your mother. If you don't honor your father and mother, you must die the death. That's why you see our sons and daughters, they are participating in Ukjola, Umjolo. Kimi Gwan Chikiri Kele. Who's responsible? Because who's responsible to, to make sure that these kids, because they started off from children. Now they are growing up, but they are still kids. So right now, every behavior that you see, whether it's social media, whether it's TikTok, wherever, it's all rebellion against what we just read. You understand? Now, Matthew 15, verse 3. Watch this. Because the reason why you see today there's so much jolo in the black community is the churches are not helping. The churches are actually making this jolo to be worse. The government is also making them jolo to be worse because now they are promoting what? They are promoting teenage sex with comprehensive sex education. 12 years old and under. You understand? Children under 12 years old, Baba Irela di Kondo, both male and female. So what is the government pushing? The government is pushing for our children to have sex. Remember when they introduced the condoms and so forth, when they say no, abstain, HIV, whatever, and all that. You know how many people got infected with HIV because of that? How many, how many HIV cases rose up because of that? Showing you that, that the government don't give a damn about us. You understand? They are pushing the white man's agenda on us to destroy our children and our families. Why? The reason why it's easy for them to do that is because we what? We departed from the laws of God. That's why it's so easy for the government to destroy us and our children and the white man to just do whatever the hell he wants. And black men and black women, you just okay with this thing. Shame on you. You understand? We have to what? We have to wake up and do what this Bible says so we can build our nation back up. It's nation building time. Understand that thing. Get that in Matthew 15 verse 3. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 3. Go ahead. But he answered and said unto them, mm. Why do we also transgress the commandment of God by your, dis by your tradition? By your tradition. He says, why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Because Christ is speaking to who? Jump up to verse 1. So we understand who he's talking to. Okay, read. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 1. Go ahead. Then came to G then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Read again. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Read. Why you do the what? disciples? No, no, that's it on that. That's it on that. Jump back down to verse 3. So Christ is speaking to the scribes and Pharisees. Okay, now read verse 3. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. Read. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? Excuse me. Why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? What was the tradition that the scribes and Pharisees, which is the modern day pastors of today, your Bushiris, your Mboros, your Mukuba, your Pastor Chris, all these wicked pastors that hate their own people. That's what that's who Christ is talking to right now. Okay. Well, I'm gonna he's gonna show you 
What were their traditions furthermore over and above, verse two? Go ahead. For God commanded saying, honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. So now Christ is bringing Exodus 20 verse 12. Read that. Get that in Exodus 20 verse 12. He is quoting the law unto them because the scribes and Pharisees, they taught the law, but they didn't apply it. They didn't give a damn about God's laws. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You see that? Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land. Now let's go back. Matthew 15, verse 4 now again. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 4. Read. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. So now Christ is quoting Exodus 20, verse, uh, Exodus 20, verse 12. You understand? Watch this, because they were, they were following their traditions more than the laws of God. So the traditions were, they took more priority than God's commandments. Okay, go ahead. But he say, more whosoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. You see what we see what the scribes and Pharisees was doing? They were going against Exodus 20, verse 12. That's why Christ is bringing it up now. He says, But you say, because of their tradition in verse 3, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Meaning what? It is a gift that I am your gift, that you brought me into this world. I'm your gift. And you're going to be pro you're gonna profit by me. You see what they are they were teaching children to go against their fathers and mothers. They were teaching children to disrespect their father and mother. That's what they were saying. You understand? Because if a child is responding like this to their parent, that means they are disrespectful. You understand? They are talking back. And the scribes and Pharisees were condoning them, just like they are doing today in the Christian church. You understand? Go ahead. And honor not his father or his mother, he you, shall you see what you see that? No, no, no. Look, look at the consequences. It says, when the child is saying it is a gift by whatsoever thou might be profited by me, this is how they honor, they are dishonoring their father and mother. That's why it says, and honor not his father or his mother. Because what were they teaching by their tradition? For children to disrespect their what? Their parents. That's why the government pushed the law that says you cannot. Uh, correct your son. You cannot correct, correct your child. And if you do, they can call the police on you and say, you are abusing them. Isn't that what's going on today? Yes. That's what our so-called government is doing. And that's not our government. The government that the Most High God cares about is the government of the 12 tribes of Israel, which the Lord is building right now in the spirit of Christ. Okay, go ahead. The book of Matthew 15 verse 6 and on a not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Read. Have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition? You see what Christ was saying? Christ was rebuking them. He says, now you are teaching the children to disrespect their parents. That's what they are doing in the Christian church. He says, no, you know, you must listen to your kids. No, 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 me, I don't listen to my children. What for? They don't know nothing. My job is to command and educate them. You understand? Not to play with them, to command and educate them so that what? They fear the most like God so that they can save their life. That's the point. You understand? So, but the scribes and Pharisees, what? They were cuddling their kids. They were making too much of their sons and daughters. And their parents were doing that because at the command of these wicked pastors of today. You understand? The government is the same thing because the government pushes what? Politics, which is a Greek religion. You understand? Christianity is another Greek religion which they are pushing on our people. So it's the same thing. There's no difference. You understand? Now watch this. Get Zechariah 13 verse 2. Because if we don't do this now with our kids or brothers and sisters coming in 
which must humble down to this Bible as we have to, we had to humble down to this Bible and still humbling down to it. Guess what's going to happen in the kingdom? What you understand? Watch this. Get Zechariah 13 verse 2. Because if you don't deal with this thing now, here's what they're going to take chances in the kingdom too. You understand? Zechariah 13, read verse 2. Come on. The book of Zechariah chapter 13 verse 2. Read. And it shall come to pass in the day, said the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land. Read. And they shall no more be remembered. That's going into the land of Israel because Christ, Christ will be among us. Jump up to verse one. Start at verse one. Let's start at verse one. Okay. The book of Zechariah, chapter thirteen, verse one. Read. In that day, there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. That fountain that will be open is talking about uh, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, because he is going to teach us face to face. Go ahead. Come on. The book of Christ, chapter 13, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall be no more remembered. So the idols will no more be remembered. That's why it says he's going to open a fountain, you understand, for the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. He's going to get rid of all the sins and all the filthiness, the uncleanness that will be among us. Go ahead. And also, I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. That goes into the false prophets will be passed out of the land. Read on. And it shall come to pass that when they, that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that beget him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live. Thou shalt what? Thou, thou shalt not live. Because there's going to be the, 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 the kids, the sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. That are gonna be speaking what speaking about what are speaking about the idols that they are worshiping today in the lands of our captivity. They're gonna to try to do that while we're in the land. You understand? Zachariah is seeing that thing in the spirit. He said, Listen, this is what's gonna happen when we are in the land. In the no, not in the in the wilderness, because in the wilderness, we are going to what the Lord is must what he must get rid of the rebels, he must patch out the rebels among us. You understand? So now what we're reading here says. There's going to be those brothers and sisters that are going to be what? They're going to be thinking about, oh, you know, I wish I could be Facebooking right now. I wish I could be TikToking right now. Guess what? They're going to be talking about their idols they used to worship, their phone, their phones, their social media platforms. They're going to be doing that before their parents. What would the Lord command to do? Read that again. What will they say? Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not live. Thou shalt not live. That child got to be put to death. Go ahead. For thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. Read. And his father and his mother that beget him shall trust him through when he prophesied. You see that thing? It says in his mother and his, his father and his mother that beget him shall trust him through when he prophesied. I mean, when he opened his mouth, it says, before all Israel even hears of it, he says, mother and father must put that child to death. That's what's going to happen when we are in the land, before we get into the land, in the wilderness. Do you understand? Why? Because they have not rehearsed the righteous acts when we was doing it. When after Christ is going to teach us again in the wilderness, so he can prepare us to go into the land, guess what? We must be taught again and we must be left by ourselves to see, are we going to apply or not? Do you understand? So you must prepare, you must be wilderness ready. Spiritually and mentally, you must be wilderness ready. How do you become wilderness ready? The classes that are coming out is not like a lovely song that is going up. No, no, no. We are preparing for the wilderness. Understand that, okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter two. Luke two verse 48, okay? You know what? Before you get that, 
Get the right three verse two. Okay. Get the right chapter three verse two. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter three verse two. Come on. For the Lord had given the father honor over the children and had confirmed and had confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. You see what the Lord did? Is that the Lord has given the father honor over the children because the father is the one that give order in the house and had confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Okay, go ahead. Because the mother will deal with the children. Read on at the command of the father. Read. Whoso honoreth his father, make it an atonement for his sins. Now, you can you might you might ask yourself, well, what does that mean exactly? It says, Whoso honoreth his father, maketh an atonement for his sins. I'm gonna explain to you what that means. Think about it like this, right? Leadership will see something in you. You understand? A spirit that you are dealing with or battling with and say, like, okay, sis, I need you to deal with X, Y, and Z. I need you to fix one, two, three, because I can see according to the scriptures, there's problems here. You understand? Yes, say, okay, bro, you, you have a problem in such and such. I need you to, I need you to, yeah, these are the scriptures. I need you to look into it. Okay, yes, say, no problem, right? Your job is to take that instruction and execute it so that you can get rid of those spirits that the Lord has what has bubbled to the surface. So when you don't do that, guess what happens? Read that verse again. The book of Ecclesiastes 3 verse 3. Read. Whoso honoreth his father, maketh an atonement for his sins. So now when you do that, for instance, you're going to make atonement for your sins because your sins are going to be forgiven. How? Because you're going to... You, you're going to follow the instruction. These are the problem areas. These are that, This is the solution. Apply it. When you apply it, guess what? That's when you receive atonement for your sins. But when you don't do it, you don't apply the counsel, you will not receive atonement for your sins. Why should you receive atonement for your sins? Because you're not applying this, the commandments, the scriptures that was given to you. What makes you think you will receive atonement for your sins? You will not. You see that thing? Go ahead. And he that honoreth his mother is as one that layeth up treasure. You are laying up treasure. What is the treasure? Wisdom. You understand? That wisdom is going to get you the kingdom. Go ahead. Come on. So verse 5. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verse 5. Read. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy over his own children. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, if you honor your father, it says you shall have joy of your own children. That's what I was explaining earlier at the beginning of the class. You honor your father and mother, you're going to have joy of your own children because why? Your children will follow your example. But if you are dishonorable to your father and mother, your children will follow your dishonorable example. You understand that? So you are not, you are, basically, you are not an asset to your nation. You are a liability. I mentioned, I made mention before this thing. I said, you get a sister that's rebellious, a sister that is stubborn. They don't want to listen. You understand? They are rebellious. They have that rebellious nature. Guess what? That's a liability. Do not marry that sister. Stay away from that black ashy demon Jezebel. You understand? Brothers as well. Brother is rebellious, don't want to follow the council, don't want to do nothing. Guess what? You stay away from that Negro right there. And guess what? We're not going to give you any job works to do in the body because you're going to mess us up. You understand? Your spirit ain't right. Until your spirit is right, you sit in some corner somewhere. Okay? Read that thing again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verse 5. Read. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy over his own children. No, not, not over. He says, shall have joy of his own children. Go ahead. Shall have joy of his own children. Excuse me. 
And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. So when you pray, the Lord says, I'm going to hear you. When you pray and the Lord says, I'm going to hear you. Because a lot of you, you are given counsel, you don't follow it. You pray, you think the Lord is hearing you. How? How? What, what Bible are you not reading? There is no way that the Lord will hear your prayers. You're just wasting your breath. The Lord don't hear nothing you say. You understand? Go ahead. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. That's Exodus 20 verse 12. Go ahead. And he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. You see that thing? You're going to be a comfort to your mother. Your mother is not going to have sorrow of life. Go ahead. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. As to his what? As to his masters. As to his what? As to his masters. As to his masters. Your parents are your master. They are what? They have power over you. That's what you need to understand. Your parents have power over you. So guess what? If a lot of you, you grew up, there was no parent. You didn't have a father in the house. Now you're coming in. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to set leadership over you to guide you because you didn't have that father in your house in when you're growing up. No problem. The Lord is going to do that. Two things will happen. When you come in, you will humble down like we read in Matthew 18, verse 3 and 4, or you'll be rebellious and not obey what the Bible is saying at the mouth of the prophets. You understand? You'll either follow it or you will not. And when you don't follow it, you see what the Bible is saying right there? It says, he that feareth the Lord will honor his father. So when you don't follow the counsel, guess what? You don't fear the Lord. You don't fear the Lord, nor do you believe the Lord. He says, will do service unto his parents as to his masters. The Lord will set masters, masters over you on this earth. You understand? That's the leadership. That's the parents and so forth. Those who are masters over you, they're supposed to tell you what to do and how to do it. Do not decline from such counsel that we read in Deuteronomy 17. You understand? Earlier this week. Okay, now watch this. Now, this verse right here, this is a, this is a heavy verse right here. Okay, I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Give me Luke 248. Let me show you about our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he was still a child. Watch this. Okay, Luke 2, verse 48. Okay, come on. The book of Luke chapter 2, verse 48. Go ahead. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou, why hast thou thus dealt to us? Mm. Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. He says, because remember they were, in, they were in Jerusalem. You understand? On the feast of the Passover. So he was there. He went into the what? He went into the temple in verse 46 in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. So his parents started to worry. They started to look for him. They couldn't find him at that point. That's why when they found him, they said what they said here. He says, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. You understand? Now watch this. Jump down to verse 51 now. After they, they spoke to him, they said, listen, we've been looking for you. Where was you at? Okay, now read verse 51. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 51. Go ahead. And he went down with him and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. He was what? And was subject unto them. So Christ was subject unto them. Who's the them? His parents, Mary and Joseph. It says he went down with them because they were there to go back to Nazareth from Jerusalem. He says, and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. He was subject unto his parents. His parents were his masters. You understand? Read on. Come on. And he said unto them, how is it that he sought me? No, 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 no. Wait, what verse you at? Read verse 51. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 51. Excuse me. Wait. And went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. 
but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. You see that thing? His mother, his mother kept all these sayings in, in her heart. But watch the next verse, because Christ was subject unto his parents, right? Now we talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Watch the next verse, verse 52. Go ahead. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 52. Go ahead. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Now that's heavy right there. We read this sometime during the week, right? But I want to show you something in the context of what we're going over this day. It says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So listen, when you don't follow counsel, right? From the leadership, the leadership gives, gives you counsel, you don't follow it. You are not going to increase in wisdom. You will not. It's not a matter of if or maybe. No, no, you are not going to increase in wisdom. You are, in other words, you are not going to grow. You will, con you will remain a spiritual rebellious midget. Okay? You're not going to grow. And because you are in that spirit, you are going to have what? The spirit of bitterness in you. You're going to start to hate brothers and sisters around you that are applying and growing. They'll be growing before you and you're going to start to have the spirit of bitterness, the spirit of envy, then the spirit of hatred. You see that thing? You would have brought that to yourself. Nobody else. You will have that spirit of Cain. The spirit of Cain will jump on you. But some of you, one ear out the other. I, get you, I don't know what I'm saying. No problem. Watch this. Now, give me the book of Deuteronomy 28. I mean, Deuteronomy 21. Because Christ was subject unto his parents, right? Okay, you know what? No, don't give me to tell me. Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews, okay? Get Hebrews 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse, read verse 7, okay? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Let's read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Go ahead. Remember them which have the rule over you. Ray, who have spoken unto you the word of God. Come on. Whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. You see what the, but the, the apostle Paul was dealing with something in the church. You understand? Among the Hebrews. He was saying, listen, remember them which have the rule over you. What does that mean? He says, remember them which have power over you. The leadership. He says, remember them. Who has spoken unto you the word of God? Because when you came in here, and until this day, we're not speaking unto you any other word except what is written in this book. You understand? Whose faith follow? Because which faith, which, which footsteps are we following after? We're following after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior. He says, consider, consider the end of their conversation. Consider the end of their counsel. You understand? Consider the end of their counsel. Now jump down to verse 17. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, 13, verse 17. Go ahead. Obey them that have the rule over you. Stop right there. It says, obey them that have the rule over you. You see that thing? Obey them that have the rule over you. The apostle Paul is repeating the same thing again in verse 7. Read on. Come on. And submit yourselves. I want you to stop right there. And do what? And submit yourselves. And you must submit yourself. Submit yourself to who? He says, submit yourself to those that have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. You see, the problem is not the leadership. The problem is you. Because he says, submit yourself. So when you don't want to submit to the council, you don't want to submit to the men that the Lord has set over you to guide you and teach you in the spirit. Guess what? The problem is yourself. You don't want to submit and humble down to what this Bible is saying. You hate government. You hate order. You hate structure. You understand? You hate being told what to do. That's the problem with, I've seen, the pro I've seen that problem with the sisters. I've seen that problem with some of the brothers. Not all, but some of you. You understand? I've seen that problem with the sisters, and I'm seeing some of it 
with some of you brothers because you have that woman spirit on you. The women have that Jezebel spirit. Guess what? The men have the spirit of Ahab. Some of you. You understand? Because you completely going against what this is saying. You see that thing? Read it again. Verse 17. Okay, come on. The book of Hebrews of 13, verse 17. Go ahead. Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls. For they watch for your souls. We watch for your souls. You understand? That's why we give you counsel. That's why these classes are for. To watch for your souls. Go ahead. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17. Okay, okay. Them. okay. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Because you are really, you are messing me up. Okay. Um, get some water. All right. We appreciate you, Soldier John. Uh, Soldier Nehemiah, I need you to read. Okay, read verse 17 for me. Yes, sir. Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17. Go ahead. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit Great. yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. You see what God is saying? It says, what is says, submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account. Give account to who? To the most high. That they must do it with joy and not with grief. You really telling me that you want, when we send the prayers up, when we're praying for the congregation and so forth, every time your name, when we send the prayers up, we must always do it with grief. Is that what you want, really? I mean, come on now. He says, for that is unprofitable for you. It's unprofitable for you. Meaning what? The prayers are going up, right? We, Raphael, the angel, will take the prayers and present them before the Holy One. As he's doing that, your name is coming up. It's like, oh, this brother right here. This sister right here. We're doing it with grief. So how do you think it's going to be received by the Father? You think it's going to be received with joy? No. It will be received with grief as well. That's what you don't understand. There's order up there in the heavens. You don't do whatever the hell you want. There's an order. That's why there's archangels up there. That's why we've got Gabriel, Michael, Uriel, and so forth. Christ is over them. You understand? And the Mosa is, is over everyone, obviously. There's an order up there. Just like the Lord is establishing order down here with us. So we must do what? We must apply, do our best to apply what this Bible is saying, to show our faith, so the Lord can have mercy upon us. You understand? The Lord will see that we try. Even during the time of Christ, there was order and structure. Watch this. Give me that in Mark 6, okay? Because some of you just think, ah, it was during because, because of during the time of, of Moses. Yeah, because you don't believe the Bible. Okay, watch this. Give me that in Mark 6. Mark chapter 6, read verse 39. Mark 6, 39. Okay, come on. The book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 39. Read. Right. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. The them is the disciples. Go ahead. And they sat down in ranks. They did what? By hundreds. And they sat down in ranks. They sat down in ranks, in ranks, in ranks. Go ahead. By hundreds and by fifties. You see that? Even during the time of Christ, there was order. You understand? He says they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. There was rank. There's always been rank. When you hate rank, order, and structure is because you hate to be told what to do. That means you hate your nation. You don't want your nation to be built back up. You don't want that. You just think it's, it's just enough for you to be said you are an Israelite. No, it's not enough. N knowing that you're an Israelite is step one. You must walk like an Israelite. That's step two. That's when now you have to change. You have to apply. You have to not make excuses. You understand? You have to understand that the nation is not going to be built if men and women make excuses for their sins. The nation will not be built back up. That's why Mjolo is such a ridiculous pandemic.
that is spreading in South Africa. Mjol. Everybody is just talking about that. Mjol, Mjol, Mjol. That's why they even have Kuya Chola night night. Hmm? Why? Because that's the new disease that is spreading in the black community. Not the COVID-19, no, Mjol. Hordom. That's what's spreading in our community this day, okay? Because Mjolo is a disease, okay, in the black community. Understand that thing, okay? Now, go back to Saragna. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 24 now, okay? Sarak 7, verse 24. You know what? Hmm. Before we get there, you know what? I want to deal with this. Give me Deuteronomy 21. I'm going to read it. Because right now, right here, in Sarak 7, 23, it says, Has thou children? So, I'm going to use the children part to deal with both men and women, but I'm going to deal with women specifically in the next verse. Right now, I just want to deal with the men, just for a second. Deuteronomy 21, read verse 18. Okay? Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which mm. will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. So now it says, a man, this brother, this mother, this father, they have a rebellious son. He's stubborn and he's rebellious. They chastise him and he does not want to listen, right? Go ahead. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. You see that thing? So today, who's the elders of the city? That's us. That's the leadership. Go ahead. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, this Great. our son is stubborn and rebellious. Great. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. So he's a glutton. He just eat. He poops. And he just drinks and sleeps. That's his job. That's all he does. You understand? He has no, he does not, he does not have anything going on for him. Okay. But he's rebellious and he's stubborn, but he still wants to eat. He still wants to drink. Where does he get the money to, to where, where does he, where is, does he have a job? He does not. Okay. But uh, somehow he's able to fill his bed. Somehow he's able to get drunk. Isn't that what we see on a daily when we go to teach on the streets? We see young men just being rebellious to their parents. First thing in the morning when we arrive at camp, they are right there smoking weed on skateboards because the parents have denounced them. The parents cannot stand them. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. They be drinking over there. We rebuke them every Sabbath, okay? Some of them have repented because they no longer come there anymore. All praise to the Lord for that. Go ahead. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. Go ahead. So shall thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. Now, I want to show you something with this verse, verse 21. He says, read that again, verse 21. Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 21. Come on. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones, that he die. Stop right there. He says, all the men of his city. So his city means what? Let's say... Um, you, you stay in Kateo. You understand? That thing is happening there in Kateo. And the neighboring, the neighboring classes in Kateo, they hear of it though. You understand? They must hear of it. But the men of that particular city, they're the ones that must deal with this. Because why? Because that evil is happening in that particular city where they end because they understand the impact of it. Because if they wink at it, they conquer that boy, they make too much of him, they don't chastise him, guess what's gonna happen? The evil that was supposed to have been put away in that city is gonna travel to the next city, and then the next city, and then the next city, because everybody else is gonna hear, hey, in such and such a place, you understand, such and such happened, but, the question will be, what was done about it? Oh, nothing. You understand? They just said, no, don't do it again. So wait a minute. What did they say? And then the next one, you understand? The next city, guess what happens to it? They do the same thing because they had, or no, no, 
in the Kisani area, the Kisani Mall area, ah oh, no, they didn't chastise the leak. They just left it. Now evil is spreading in the city. The reason why is that the men of that city must stone him was so that evil can be put away from that particular city from spreading to other cities to pollute the rest of the brethren. You men understand that? Yes, sir. That is what was yes, going sir. on this day. That's what was going on here. You understand? Now watch this. Let me play this video, okay? I've got a video that I want to play. Watch this, okay? I'm going to show you, some of you spiritually, you are like this, in the spirit. You behave like this right here, like this boy that we, I'm going to show you now. The way this boy is behaving, some of you behave just like this, in spiritually. Now, this is a school child. Okay, anybody see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, praises. So now, this is at school. This is, I think, is in the principal's office. This boy right here, this is a school boy. This is the teacher. Now, I want you to see what goes down here. This boy has dealt in a non-civil way with another so-called colored boy. Okay, now watch this. Okay, let, let me just put the volume up a little bit. See how emotional this boy is? Very highly emotional. You see, he's twitching like a robot. The teacher's telling him, sit down so I can solve this problem. You are racist, no? Are you racist? You are racist. Your remarks you make the whole time is racist. You are 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 accused of no he's, he's a racist he listen black people don't have the power to be racist let me say that again okay we don't have the power to be racist let me just put that out there we have no power to be racist because we are at the bottom of all nations do you understand okay so but what i'm let me read that actually get that into Tommy 28 real quick the Tommy chapter 28 and verse 32 read that because it requires 
it requires power to be racist. Okay, watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Go ahead. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, Wait. and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. You see that part right there? It says, and there shall be, there shall be no might in thine hand. We're not going to have political, military, or economic power to get our sons and daughters back. So what you are seeing there, when they are, they are accusing him of being a racist, that's all. That's just a lie. You understand? The Lord is telling us that in the lands of our captivity, we're not going to have any might in our hand to do anything. Our, neither did our parents have might to return us back. Neither will we have might, economic, political, or military power to get our sons and daughters back or to do anything about what the nations are doing to oppress us except picking up, picking up this Bible, reading about it, repenting of our sins so the Lord can come and deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Luke 1 verse 71 real quick. Okay. I just want to deal with that. Luke 1 verse 71. Okay. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 71. Go ahead that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. You see that thing? We should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So we have no power in this land. So we cannot be accused of being racist. That's crazy. You understand? They cannot be accused of being racist. But I just wanted to deal with that, that part of the video. But what I want to show you is you see how rebellious that boy was? He didn't listen to the teachers. The way he knew, even the way that he was talking to his, the teachers, he was being very disrespectful the way he talked to the teachers. He even wanted to fight them physically. They are physically even trying to put him down, say, listen, sit down and be quiet so we can deal with this. He still doesn't want to listen. You understand? He's, he's talking to the teacher saying, XA, hi, man, man, XA, XA. You see how disrespectful that boy is? He's a disrespectful boy. And those are our sons right there. You understand? So some of you spiritually, you are exactly like that. You twitch like a robot when correction comes. When counsel comes, you twitch like that. That's how you behave like that spiritually. Watch this. Get that in Romans 7, verse 14. Because the laws of God, they're spiritual. Okay? Romans 7, verse 14. Watch this. Some of you spiritually, you are just like that. Okay? Romans 7, verse 14. Read that. Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. Go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is what? The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. God's commandments... They are spiritual. So when the laws of God comes out, if your spirit is on the resistant front, you will twitch like a robot and it will show immediately. And, and when your spirit is right, you say, you know what? I want to humble down and do what this Bible says. It will also show. You're not going to twitch like a robot. You are going to relax and receive and apply and grow. That's it. This, the formula is very simple. You understand? But some of you, you just like that young boy. Rebellious as hell like a wild bull in a net. Get that in Isaiah 51 verse 20. Because you see how wild that boy is? Some of you spiritually, you are like that. Okay? Isaiah 51 verse 20. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Go ahead. Thy signs have fainted, they lie at the head of all the streets Come as on. a wild bull in a net. Ray. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. You see that thing right there? Thy sons have fainted, meaning they are unconscious to who they are. That's why they are what? It says what? They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. Because that's how our sons are this day. They are wild. They are like a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of their God, meaning full of God's judgment. You understand? They are full of the anger of the Lord. Just look at the way that boy was behaving. You understand? So 
and he was being corrected. He was being given an instruction of what he needs to do, but he could not contain himself. You see how he was acting? It was as if he was possessed by a demon because he was possessed by one. He had the devil on him. Guess what? Some of you, when you are given counsel, that's how you behave. You act like that, but you contain it very well though. You act very well. I'm going to show you something. Get that, the, give, give me the book of John 12, okay? Get John, John 12. John chapter 12, I think is verse 6. John 12 and verse 6. Yeah, read that. John 12 verse 6. Start of verse 4. Now, this goes into, this is Judas Iscariot, okay? Watch this. Read it. John chapter 12 verse 4. Go ahead. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's mm. son, which should betray him. We should betray Christ, right? Go ahead. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Go ahead. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief because and had the bag. But because he was a thief, this is talking about Judas Iscariot. It says, because he was a thief. Remember, when we come into this truth, we come in with issues. You understand? Thieves will come into this truth. Liars will come into this truth. Fornicators will come into this truth. Adulterers, adulteresses, weed smokers, so on and so forth, right? You come into this truth. So when you come in, your, is, your job is to do what? Is to apply God's commandments and change your life and repent from those evils that you came in with, right? Judas Iscariot did not cheat because Judas was a thief. Judas Iscariot was a thief. And what did, the job that Christ gave him was to carry the bag of money. You understand? Now read verse 6 again. John chapter 12, verse 6. Great. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. You see that thing? So, I mean, Judas, he walked with the son of God, right? Judas, he walked with the son of God. Christ was right there. Judas did not, because why would Christ give the man that is a thief a bag of money to hand? Why would he do that? Because the, the, the hope was Judas will repent. Judas will, will, would repent from his wickedness of being a thief. And Christ was right there. So Judas did not confess, confess his sin to the Lord so the Lord can take their spirit away from him. I mean, here you are, you're walking with the son of God. You sit in there just containing that wicked demon in you when the son of God can what? Can take it away. You see that thing? Hmm. So now you are in the world. You come into this truth. You are taught God's commandments. And we are nowhere on the level of, because remember, Judas Iscariot was a disciple. We are nowhere anywhere that level. You understand? But the little that the Lord has given us, we're using the laws of God to make judgments, righteous judgments, so we can be in order. You understand? So now imagine you come into this truth, you hear of the glorious gospel of Christ. The laws of God are taught to you. You understand? But you don't change your ways. You still pretend everything is all good. I'm fine. Everything is perfect. Hmm? And when the correction comes, you twitch like a robot, but you contain it very well, just like Judas Iscariot was doing. That's simple as hell. Okay? Now, where was we at? Watch this. Give me, um, get, get, get Sirach. Let's go back to Ecclesiasticus. Okay? I just wanted to show that video so you can see. Okay? Sirach chapter 7, read verse 24 now. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, verse 24. Go ahead. Hast thou daughters? Have a care of their body, and show not thyself cheerful toward them. Now, now this right here, now this is specifically go, goes, talks about the sisters. He says, Hast thou daughters have a care of their body, and show not thyself cheerful towards them. Meaning what? We will not play with you, none of you sisters when it comes to this book. You understand? We're not going to do that. Why? Because you see the question is being asked here. 
is as has thou daughters. In order for you to have daughters, that means you must be a father. Get that in Sarah 4, verse 10. Give me Ecclesiastes 4, verse 10. Watch this. Sarah 4, verse 10. Okay. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10. Great. Be as a father unto the fatherless, and instead of an husband unto their mother, Great. so shall thou be as the son of the Most High, and he shall love thee more than thy mother does. So this, this scripture right here says, be as a father unto the fatherless, right? Because we, we, will be, we are fathers to you. Let me say that. We are fathers to you, sisters. We are fathers to you. Leadership, you are, we are your father. Understand that, okay? It says, be as a father unto the father. I'm your father. Watch this. It says, and instead of a husband, unto their mother. So what does that mean? Instead of a husband, unto their mother. So it's like, let's say you're proving a sister. The sister has a child. The first priority is not to deal with the sister per se. No, the first priority is to be a father to this child. See if how you get along with the son or the daughter so you can teach them. You must have a good, you must start to build a relationship with that child. You understand? That's what this is going into. He says, so shall thou be as the son of the Mosai, and he shall love thee more than thy mother does. So he's going to, the Lord is going to love you more than your mother does. You understand? The Lord will do that. The, the, the man is going to love you more than your father did also. You understand? Your earthly father. Why? Because the way we love you is by teaching you God's laws, setting you in order, making sure that you're not idle, giving you chores, things to do to prepare you for marriage in the future. You understand? Your job is to obey, follow every godly discourse. Don't come up in here and disrespect your fathers that God has set over you. Understand that thing. Now, let's go back. Okay, uh, go back to Sarah 724 now. Okay, Ecclesiastes 7, verse 24 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 24. Go ahead. Hast thou daughters, have a care of their body, and Great. show not thyself cheerful toward them. He says, hast thou daughters, have a care of their body. Okay, hast thou daughters? Yes, we do. Okay, watch this. Give me 1 Timothy 5 and 1. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 1. Okay, 1 Timothy 5 and 1. You sisters, you're not supposed to be by yourself at any point in time in your life. You understand? From your father's house, you go to your husband's house. That's the order right there. Okay, now read that. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 1. Go ahead. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. But do what? But entreat him as a father. You see that thing? It says, but entreat him as a father. So it says the leadership, you must entreat the leadership as fathers. Why? Because that's the commandment. That's the law right there. A lot of you, especially the sisters, a lot of you, you don't want to what? You don't want to follow counsel because you don't see leadership as your fathers. You see us as niggers with Bibles. That's why. You don't see fathers when you look at us. You see niggers with Bibles. That's why you think you can come in here and disrespect your fathers. You don't have to follow counsel. You just do whatever the hell you want. You're going to die. I'm going to tell you straight. You don't follow the counsel. I'm going to show you the judgment that will come if, if you don't repent. Okay? Now, watch this. Keep going. And the younger men as brethren. So the young men... The soldiers in the camp, those are your brothers. You understand? It says, and the young men as brethren. The soldiers, those are good. Those are, those are your brothers. Understand that thing. Leadership, your fathers, and guess what? The young men, that's the soldiers, that's your brothers. Understand that? That's the order. Go ahead. Verse 2. First Timothy, chapter 5, verse 2. Go ahead. The elder women as mothers, mm. the younger as sisters with all purity. With all purity. So here says the elder women as mothers. So the older sisters in the truth, they are mothers to you. You understand? They are mothers. It says, and young, younger sisters, it says, and the younger 
as sisters. So because we've got young children in the camp, you are older sisters today. You understand? That's what does the order. That's the order right there. Understand that thing. We're building a nation here. We don't got time for BS. Understand that? Watch this. Now, when you don't listen to the council, you understand? You don't listen to the council. I'm going to give an example, right? Give me, give me the book of Numbers. Okay, give me Numbers 12, verse 1. I'm going to give an example with this. Let me show you what happened to our forefather, our foremother Miriam. Okay, Numbers 12. We're going to start at verse 1. Numbers 12, verse 1. Read that. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. So Moses married an Ethiopian woman, right? Watch this. Now Miriam and Aaron are there. They are speaking against Moses for this thing. Read verse 2. Come on. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord mm -hmm. heard it. You see that thing right there? So they were speaking evil of Moses, both of them. He says, had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Is he only talking to Moses? You understand? You understand? You, some simps, simps will complain about leadership. So is the women. The women like to complain about leadership because leadership comes with instruction and order. A simp Negro also does the same thing. That's that Ahab spirit. Okay. Ray? It says, and no. the Lord, hold on. And the Lord heard it. So the most High God heard the complaint. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 7. Numbers chapter 12, verse 7. Ray. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. Because Moses says, man, Moses was a prophet. He was the meekest man on the earth, like he says in verse 3. So now it says, Moses, you know what? Read verse 6 so we can just understand what's going on. Okay, come on. Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. So the Lord is, come, is telling Moses, and, I mean, Miriam and Aaron, how he will speak. If there's a prophet among them, he says, this is how I'm going to speak unto you. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. He says, my servant Moses, I'm not going to talk to him like that. Because he's faithful in all my house. Read on. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. He says, even with, apparently. With Moses, hold on. With Moses, I will speak mouth to mouth. I'm going to make things apparent unto Moses. I'm going to make it plain. I'm going to explain things to him. Go ahead. Even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Pray. Wherefore, then were he not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? You see what the Lord is asking? He says, we, therefore, we, then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Some of you, you are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, especially the women. You are not afraid to speak evil of leadership. You are not afraid to do it. The Lord is asking the question, he says, were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Were you not afraid? Hmm? That's what he's asking, right? Go ahead. Verse 9. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. You see that the anger of the Lord was kindled. The Lord did not reward them for their evil. The Lord didn't do that. But I want to show you something with this. Go ahead. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. Stop right there. And so you see what the Lord did? The Lord judged Miriam. Because what was, why was, why was, why wasn't Aaron judged? But Miriam was the only one that was judged for this. Because Miriam was author usurping authority over the man. That's why she was judged for this thing. What was the judgment? Read that again, verse 10. Numbers chapter 12, verse 10. Go ahead. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold. The chariot. So the chariot departed from off the tabernacle. Go ahead. 
and behold, Miriam became lepers, white mm. as snow. Miriam became what? Miriam became leprous, white as snow. It says Miriam became leprous, white as snow. So what did the Lord do? The Lord took the pigmentation from our foremother Miriam. She was what? She was turned into a white girl. That's what the Lord did to Miriam. He said she was leprous, white as snow. She made him, she made uh, Miriam look like an Edomite. Go ahead. And Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold, she was leprous. She was leprous. She was, um, she was like um, Katy Perry. Okay, go ahead. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. You see that thing? So now Aaron is doing what? He's acknowledging what he has done. He says, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned, because they were speaking evil of Moses. Okay, now watch this. Keep going. Read on. Let it not you know be as. Mm. You know what? Read that again. Read that again. Verse 12. Numbers chapter 12, verse 12. Read. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. He says, let, let her not be as one dead. Because you see the way the, that Esau looks like? is like they look dead. That's what the Lord is saying. So you can imagine our sisters that be bleaching their skin, they also look dead. Who can you bow? They look dead. So, but, so that means something happened to Miriam's skin. The Lord cursed Miriam's skin because of what? Because she was disobedient. Hmm. Hmm. Watch this. Give me the book of Job, chapter 7, verse 5. I'm going to show you something with this. Okay? Because Miriam's skin, what happened to it? The Lord judged Miriam by turning her into a white girl. Watch this. She became Job. Paris Hilton. That's what happened to Miriam. She became Paris Hilton. Now read that. Job 7, verse 5. Go ahead. Job, chapter 7, verse 5. Go ahead. My flesh is clothed with worms and clots of dust. Go ahead. My skin is broken and become loathsome. Now that's heavy right there. It says, my, it says, my flesh is clothed with worms and clots of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. That's why some of you sisters, your skin is jacked up. Yeah, I'm going to tell you straight. That's why today, some of you sisters, your skin is jacked up. Why? You see what Miriam did? Miriam, she was disrespectful at this point. She was out of order. What did the Lord do? The Lord affected her skin. Because I get you, that's what you care about. You care about your outward appearance and all that. You don't care about the spiritual thing whatsoever. The Lord said, okay, no problem. I'm going to deal with your outward appearance because that's what you focus on. That's all you care about. Guess what? I'm going to make your skin to grow pimples on it. I'm going to jack your face up. I'm going to jack your arms up. You're going to have pimples. Your skin will keep breaking. Nothing will work whatever you apply on it. Mm. That's the judgment of the most High God. You see, some of you sisters, your mind is not right. Your spirit ain't right. Okay? Now go back to Numbers 12. Numbers chapter 12, verse 12 again. Okay, come on. Numbers chapter 12, verse 12. Read. Right. Let it not be as one dead, mm. of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. When he cometh out of his mother's womb. Okay, now watch this. Jump down to verse 14. Go ahead. Numbers chapter 12, verse 14. Read. Right. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, Stop should right she there. not? It says, If her father had but spit. Spit in her face, meaning what? If her father did what? Her father chastised that behind, okay? That's what it means when it says, if her father had but spit in her face, meaning what? Set her behind in order. Locked her ass up in the house so that what? So she don't become shameless, okay? Read. If her father had but spit in her face, 
should he not be ashamed seven days? Wait. Let it be shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, let it be received in again. You see that thing? It says, no, put the, put the, put, 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 put the woman away. Put her away. Okay, for seven days. And after that, she must be received again. Do you understand? But that was the judgment for Miriam. She was turned into Paris Hilton. That's what happened to her. Some of you sisters, that's what's happening to you. Your skin is breaking. The Lord is jacking you up. Your beauty, the Lord is, I'm going to mess that up because that's what you care about. You understand? I'm going to make your coochie to stink. Yeah, the Lord did that. I'm going to make your hair to not to grow. The Lord said, I'm going to do that thing to you. Why? Because you don't listen. You don't listen to what this Bible is saying. You don't respect your fathers that the Lord has set over. You understand? But Miriam did get a mind right. Where the hope is, you sisters will do the same. Get the book of Exodus 15 verse 20. Because Miriam did get a mind right. Okay? At this point, this is when this, Miriam got her mind right. Exodus 15 verse 20. Now watch this. Read that. Exodus chapter 15 verse 20. Go ahead. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Because Miriam, she what? She led the women, the, the singing women. She was, she, 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 was, she was the one that was leading the singing women. That's why it says Miriam, the prophetess. This is when she got her mind right. You understand? She repented of her evil. And guess what? The Lord was able to see her humility humbling down to the scriptures. He says, and the sister, the sister of Aaron took a timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrel and with dances. She was prophesying. You understand? Because music, we prove our forefathers and former, they prophesied with music as well. That's what Miriam was doing right here. You understand? Because it's very important to understand that, sisters. This is the example of our former, the Miriam. When she went the hell off, the Lord said, okay, I'm going to set you in order. You understand? I'm going to humble you down. Watch this. Give me the book of Sarah 22, verse 3. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 22 and verse 3. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 22, verse 3. Go ahead. An evil nurtured son is the dishonor of his father that begat him. Come on. And a foolish daughter is born to his loss. A foolish daughter is born to the father's loss. Because why? She's a waste of space. Yes, yeah, she's a waste of time. It says she what? It says a foolish daughter is born to his loss. Because that daughter is not an asset. She's a liability. She's good for nothing. Okay, go ahead. Verse 4, read. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. A wise daughter. Because this daughter right here is as a wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. Stop right here. Let's go to the book of, let's go to the history of Suzanne. It says, a wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her what? To her husband. Watch this. History of Susanna chapter 1 verse 1. Read them. The history of Susanna chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. There dwelt a man in Babylon called Joachim. Read. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Chelsius, a very fair woman and one that feared the Lord. Now, what you want to notice about our sister, our foremother Susanna here, it says, it says she was a very fair woman and one that feared the Lord. You see that? Give me that in Proverbs 31. I'm going to show you something right here. Proverbs 31, it says she was a beautiful sister. Then it says, and one that feared the Lord. You see, some of you sisters, you just focus on your beauty. You think your beauty, your, your, you understand, your beauty and your coochie is going to get you the kingdom. Mm -mm, that's not going to happen. Watch this. Get that in Proverbs 31, verse 30. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 30. You know what? Start of verse 29. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 29. Okay, read that. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. No, verse 29. 
Come on. Excuse me, sir. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 29. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. You see that thing? You, you sisters, you need to read this and say, you know what? I want, I want the men in Israel to say this about me right here. He says, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. This is the spirit that you, you must roll in. Okay, go ahead. Favor is deceitful. Mm. And beauty is vain. And beauty is what? And beauty is vain. Because over time, your beauty is going to change. You're not going to look like this forever. Because some of you think you're going to look like this forever. No, no, no. As you grow older, gravity is going to take its toll. Gravity is going to start to pull things down. You started, you're going to start to have cross feet on next to your ear, I mean, next to your eye. When you laugh, you're going to have like a cross feet. You understand? That's what's going to happen. Wrinkles and so forth. Yeah, that's what we're reading right here. His beauty is vain. But what endureth forever? Go ahead. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You, if you fear the Lord, you're going to be praised forever. Meaning what? You are, meaning what? You're going to have a good name in Israel forever. Not for your beauty. No, no. For you fearing the Lord. You having what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understand. Like our foremother, Judith. You understand? Like our foremother, Sarah. Shifra. Pua. You understand? Phoebe. Hmm? Priscilla. You understand? Dorcas. Those are our foremothers that are our foremother, uh, Anna, from the tribe of Asher in Luke 2.36. Those are our foremothers that today we still talk about them. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right here. Now let's go back. You know what? Keep reading. Read verse 31. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 31. Go ahead. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, give her of the fruit of her hands. Because this sister right here, she does good works in Israel. It says, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Yo, it's, that means this sister has her own works. If she's got her own works, that means she's what? She's diligent. She's dedicated. She's disciplined. She don't make excuses. You understand? Because in order for you to have to, 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 to have works, that means you take initiative and you want you discipline yourself in the project that you take up. You don't start and then you just finish, you just finish prematurely along the way. Mm -mm. That's not the Proverbs 31 woman. You understand? Now let's go back. Let's go back to the history of Susanna. Read verse 2 again. The history of Susanna, verse 2. Read. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Chelsea, a very fair woman and one that feared the Lord. You see that thing? It says a very fair woman and one that feared the Lord. What made our foremother Susanna's name to even be mentioned is because she feared the Lord. She feared the Lord. This sister right here, she was a God-fearing woman right here. You understand? And she submit, She was submissive to her husband. Go ahead. Verse 3, read. Her parents also were righteous mm. and, taught, and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. You see what they did? It says her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 6, verse 7. You understand? That's what they applied. They applied that law. They apply that law in Sarah 30, that what we was reading. You understand? So she is a righteous example. You understand? She, has, she, she, she is a righteous example. And guess what? I'm going to show you something about our four mothers to say. Jump down to verse, read verse 29. I'm going to show you something. here. Watch this. The history of Susanna, verse 29. Go ahead. And said before the people, Send for Susanna, the daughter of Chelsea, Joachim's wife. And so they sent. So now you notice here, it says, now uh, when she was, it was time for judgment, it says, send for Susanna, okay, because she was the defendant. And the daughter, the daughter of Chelsea, it says Joachim's wife. And so they, they sent, right? Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 30. Come on. 
So she, so she came with her father and mother, her children and all her kindred. You see, you see, you see what she received? You see what she had behind her? Support. This sister had support behind her. It says, so she came with her father and mother, her children and all her kindred. So she, she they were, she, she had support behind her. She had support behind it. The reason why you don't see Joachim's name being mentioned here is because Joachim had to sit on the side so that he cannot be what? He cannot be biased. That's why he was, his, his name is not mentioned here. You understand? Now, jump down to verse 27. Jump up to verse 27. The history of Susanna, verse 27. Read. But when the elders had declared their matter, the servants were greatly ashamed. For there was never such a report made of Susanna. Because our foremother Susanna had a good reputation. That's why when she was accused of this thing, they were, they were surprised. Oh, what, that sister? No, 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 not that sister. Something must be wrong. You understand? That's why says, the servants were greatly ashamed for there was never such a report made of Susanna. You see that? Why? Because our foremother Susanna is that she feared the Lord. You understand? And she was taught according to the law of Moses. That's what we do in this day. We teach him the laws of God, the statutes and the commandments in the faith of Christ. You see that thing right there? Now, go back to Sirach 22. Sirach 22 and verse 4 again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 22 verse 4. Read. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. Stop right there. So the inheritance that our foremother Susanna brought to her husband was what? Submission, respect, honor, you understand? Wisdom, God's commandments and understanding of judgment. That's what she brought to her husband because she was raised up the right way and she had a good name. You see that thing right there? She had a good name. That's the inheritance that she brought to her husband. Go ahead, watch this. But she that liveth dishonestly is a father's heaviness. Some of you sisters, you are my, you are what? Uh, you are my heaviness. I'm going to tell you straight. It says, but she that liveth dishonestly is a father's heaviness. You see that thing right there? Now, watch this. I'm going to show you something. Keep reading. Read verse 5 now. Go ahead. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband. Stop right but there. They... It says, hold on. It says, she that is bold, bold towards what? Bold towards the scriptures. Bold against the scriptures. Meaning what? The scriptures goes out, counsel goes out, to hell with that. I don't want to hear that. But they won't say it like that. They won't say that. They'll just say, yes, I'll do it. But when it comes to actually applying it, they don't do nothing. The counsel that was given. It says, she that is bold, dishonored both her father and her husband. So which means that because she's bold towards her father, because of, because of to, towards her father's instruction, unlike our foremother Susanna, it says, it's, it's not an if, you are, going to, you are going to be bold towards your husband as well. It's not if, it's not maybe, no, it's a fact. You are going to be bold towards your husband also. You're going to be rebellious because you see, sisters that are dangerous, they are those that they don't say no. They say, yes, we will do, we will apply the counsel, but they don't do it. That's a dangerous sister right there. That one right there, that one you must watch. That's the dangerous sister because why? She is practicing passive aggressive behavior. That's the devil. That's the devil right there. That's not the spirit of the Lord. No, that's the spirit of Satan. Okay? That's Satan right there. Because she will make you believe that she's going to do it and she won't apply none of the counsel that came out. That's the devil right there. You understand? So read that again, verse 5. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verse 5. Read. She that is bold, dishonoreth both her father and her husband, but they both shall despise her. 
You see that thing? You are going to be hated of your father and your husband that's going to marry you because you are bold. Watch this. Get that in 2nd Ezra chapter 14. 2nd Ezra 14. Watch this. 2nd Ezra chapter 14 and verse... Read, read verse 13. I'm going to show you something. 2nd Ezra chapter 14 verse 13. Go ahead. Now therefore, set thine house in order. So when and we give you God's commandments, when we teach you God's laws, set your spiritual house in order first and foremost. Then you'll be able to set your physical house in order. Go ahead. And reprove thy people. Then you can correct your, main, your nation. Read on. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Uh -huh. And now renounce corruption. It says comfort such of them as be in trouble. Because how are we comforting you? Remember what we read in Psalms 23 verse 4. It says thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. We comfort you with the scriptures because you are in trouble. Because you are bold towards the scriptures, you are bold towards your fathers, you are bold towards your husband. Guess what's going to happen? You and I are going to be in trouble because of your behavior. You're going to destroy everything we're trying to build. You're going to bring trouble into the house. That's why it says comfort such of them as be in trouble. Because you're wrong, you are bold towards the scriptures when the scriptures are coming out. Guess what? Your wicked behavior will bring trouble into my house. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. Go ahead. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. No, no, no. We finish that verse, verse 13. It says, and now do what? And now renounce corruption. It says, and now renounce corruption because when you are comforted with the scriptures, we are no longer going to be in trouble because of your behavior. And then corruption will be renounced. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. Because it says, comfort such of them as be in trouble. Your behavior, like I mentioned, is going to bring trouble into my house. Now, get that in Proverbs 14, verse 1. Proverbs 14, verse 1. Read that. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Go ahead. Every wise woman buildeth a house, mm. but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. You see that thing? Every wise woman, this is the Proverbs 31 woman, like our foremother Susanna, it says, every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with their hands because she's bold towards the scriptures. She's bold towards her father and she will be bold towards her husband. And she's bold towards her husband. Passive aggressive behavior because that's what the sisters do. Very subtle of heart. You understand? Yes, I'll do it, but they don't do it. What are they saying? Listen, I don't want to hear. I'm not going to listen to you, Negro. You understand? Because they don't see us as the prophets of God back on this earth. You understand? I need you men to understand this thing. You sisters as well. Okay? Now go back. Second Genesis 14. Second Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. Watch this. Second Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. Go ahead. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Mm. Cast away the burdens of men. Read. Put off now the weak nature. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, let go from thee mortal thoughts, meaning your emotions. Let go of your emotions because sisters, they worship their emotions. They, are emo they let their emotions make decisions for them. If it feels good, do it. If you don't feel good, I'm not going to do it. They don't check whether it's biblical or not. They just say, I don't feel good about this thing, so therefore I'm not going to do it. That's why it says, let go from thee mortal thoughts. Them evil thoughts you got, them evil, wicked, be, be wicked thoughts that you have, that you have that are that are going against the order that you was given. The Lord says, let it go. Let it go. Repent. That's what he's saying. And cast away the what? Cast away the burdens of man. The burdens of man is what? The spirit of Jezebel. That's the burdens of man. Because you are burdening yourself with the Jezebel spirit. You are burdening yourself with the feminist spirit. You are burdening yourself with the 50-50 spirit. You are burdening yourself with what I am also can make, can, can usurp authority over the man. I'm equal. I'm not under you. I'm not going to submit myself to you. That's the burdens that you put upon yourself. 
And who taught you those things? The wicked, the serpent taught you those things. The white man, he taught you those things. So who are you worshiping? Not the God of Israel. You're worshiping the devil. You understand? You are worshiping the devil. And guess what? The black woman has not learned her lesson from the time she left the garden. She, not, she, she has not learned her lesson. She has not learned her lesson since the time she left the garden. The sisters are still repeating the same mistakes that our foremother did uh, in the garden, Eve. They are still repeating the same mistake, still listening to the serpent. That's why the apostle Paul, when he was writing, he always had to remind us over and over of what? He always had to remind us of what, of what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve all the time. So we don't make the same mistakes. You understand? Now, read that part again. And what? And cast away the what? Cast away the burdens of men. Cast away the burdens of men. Everything that I just mentioned, that's the burdens of the white man. That you, now you have what? You put them on yourself. You put those burdens of the white man upon yourself. You know why? Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon 2.23. I'm going to show you. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 23. The reason why the black woman does not want to cast away the burdens of the white man is because of this right here. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 23. Read that. The Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 23. Go ahead. For God created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Come on. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. And they that do hold of his side do find it. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. So who envied the devil? The black woman. Our foremother Eve, she envied the devil. That's why Solomon, give me that in Proverbs 3.31 now. Through envy of the devil came death into the world. Now, now because of the rebellious or the rebellious spirit of the black woman, she wants to bring death to the world of Israel as we are building from the ground up. You cannot make this stuff up. Okay, read that Proverbs 3.31. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Wait. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. You see that thing? Choose none of the burdens of the oppressor like we read in 2 Corinthians 14, 14. It says, don't envy the oppressor. You understand? Neither must you choose the ways of the oppressor. What is the ways of the oppressor? The burdens of the oppressor. Politics, religion, democracy, 50-50, feminism, you understand? Women power, black, you know, women female, future is female, disrespect of your fathers, you understand? That's what, that's the burdens of men. That's the ways of the oppressor that the Lord says, do not envy his ways like you did in the garden. But the black woman hasn't learned her lesson. She's still what? She's still being rebellious. You understand? Now, go back. Second is this, okay? Second is this 14. Verse 14 again. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 14. Read. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Come on. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. He says, put off now the what? Put off now the weak nature. You see what the Bible is saying? He says, put off now the weak nature. So, a sister is rebellious. A sister is bold towards the scriptures. She don't want to apply. You understand? She's stubborn. When, when you are building, she's trying to destroy because she envies the white man. She's burying herself with the, with the system of the white man to oppress the black man and destroy the world of Israel. The law says that's a weak sister. That's a sister that is a weak mind. She's weak-minded. That's a weak sister. She's a liability. She's not an asset. That's a liability right there. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. You understand? That's why it says, put off now the weak nature. A rebellious woman, that's a weak woman. A stubborn woman, that's a weak woman right there. You understand? You have to give her time so that her spirit can be built up if that's what she wants. If she loves a nation. If she cares about her brothers and sisters, 
if she wants the kingdom of heaven to be established upon this earth, that's what she will do. But if she does not do it, she don't give a damn about this truth. Even with a long dress and a bottle of blue, she don't give a damn. I'm gonna tell you straight. I need you to understand this thing, both you men and women, okay? Am I still audible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Now, watch this. I'm gonna play the video now. Let's play the video. Let me show you. Um, you know what? Go back to Sarah 22. Go back to Sarah 22. Okay, because that's where we were, right? Yes, sir. Sarah chapter 22, verse 5 again. Give me a second. Let me share my screen. Now, before we share my screen, give me Sarah 22, verse 5 again. Read that. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 22, verse 5. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband, but they both shall despise her. Ecclesiasticus chapter 22, verse 5. Go ahead. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband, Wait. but they both shall despise her. You see what the Bible is saying? is a she that is bold dishonors both her father and her husband, uh, but but they both, meaning they both, the father and the husband, shall despise it. He didn't say hate. He didn't say dislike. He says despise. That's a deep word. That's a very strong word, right? That's a strong word right there. Now watch this. I'm going to show you the, an example of a daughter that despises both father and mother. Watch this. Because when you don't listen to counsel, this is what happens. This is what happens to the sister. Okay, this is the this is what jumps on the spirit. Watch this. Now, what you're about to see is a daughter, is a disrespectful, bold daughter. She disrespects her father. Okay, watch this. Hey mom, can I go to town this weekend with some friends? With who? And where, Lena? It's not with a boy, is it? Well, yeah, Mom, but it's not just him. There's other people going, too. It's like six of us all together, so I won't be alone. And we're just going to Vegas for two days. That's it. It's with Dante, right? Isn't that boy over 18 now? Well, yeah, but only for two months. I knew him before that, so it's not like it's a big deal or anything. I've known him for a year already. God, Mom. Well, I guess so. But you better call your father to get the money that you need, because I'm not giving you mine. He's the dang bank. If you can get the money from him, you can go. I'm cool with that. So do what I taught you to do, girl. You can get the money from him. He's easy. And if you have any other problems, you just tell him that I already said it's okay. I'll go for it, baby. Thanks, Mom. You're the best. Us girls got to stick together when it comes to these men. Mm, 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 mm. Just look at that. Is as us girls got to stick together when it comes to these men. First, she agreeing to her daughter going on a date for two days in Vegas. So what is she doing? Prostituting her daughter. As is the mother, so is her daughter. Now let's deal with that. Get that in Leviticus 19, verse 29. Leviticus 19, verse 29. Now read that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Go ahead. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. You see that? Let's says, don't prostitute your daughter to cause your daughter to be a whore, to be mugwanti. You understand? That, because that's what we're reading in the Af 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 frictionary. You understand? A frictionary, that dictionary online right there, mugwanti, stop, okay? Svepenist. That's what we just read. That's what we were reading here. The Lord says, don't prostitute your daughter to cause it to be a Svepenist. Because she's acting like a what? She's acting like she's, she does not do sphere things, but she's a spherenist. I keep that's what we read. Hold on, because I know some of you forgot already. Okay, let's go back there. I know some of you has forgot. Okay, you might be remembering Groovist. No, not today. We're not talking about Groovist today. Not the Groovist. Okay. Watch this. Mm. Okay, let me share my screen so we can see. 
There it is right there. Let's read that. It's feminist. Because that sister that you just saw, that was talking to her mother, that is feminist right there. In, in this truth, is these sisters with long dresses, head covered and so forth, but on the inside, that's how they are. Okay. Read that. It's feminist. Read it. The definition of the definition of mm. according to Africanary, Sfebenist, as febe that hides behind being as febe, but do febe things behind closed doors. You see that thing? A febe that high because you are reading it, you are pronouncing it in English. No, no, no. A febe. You see, a febenist. A febe that hides behind being as febe. But do spare things behind closed doors. Now let's read this. That one is just pretending to be a feminist. She actually is a feminist. She actually is a feminist. So here we're dealing with a feminist. She's a daughter, but she's a feminist. You understand? Under carpet. Okay. Now. She she deals with this kelema this one she deals with this kelema kimu guanti ki strat mate ki that is not the spring chicken no is the strat mate the strat mate is that chicken yago the one that that you have to you have to boil it for eight hours before it becomes soft that's the one right there now read that Leviticus nineteen twenty nine Leviticus chapter nineteen verse twenty nine go ahead. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Great. Lest the land fall to whoredom and mm. the land become full of wickedness. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't prostitute your daughter to cause your daughter to be a feminist. Lest the land fall to whoredom. Because when prostitution is, prostitution is taking place, because the, the, the parents are promoting it, because they are not correcting their daughters, it says what? The land will fall to hoardom. That means what? The land will fall to what? The Lord will fall to Mjolo. That's what we're going over. The land will fall to Mjolo. I guess today that's the terms we're using. The land will fall to Mjolo and people will do what? People will be involved in Ukjola. That's what the people will be involved. That's the disease that is plaguing the black community. The Israelite nation and the land become full of wickedness. You see that thing right there? Now, give me Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Because the mother is the one that's promoting this thing. She's promoting her daughter to go out to Vegas for two days. You understand? So she's the one that is prostituting her daughter. Okay? And she's even teaching her daughter to manipulate her father. You see that thing? Read that. Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Read Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 44. Go ahead. Behold, everyone that uses proverbs shall use these proverbs against thee, saying, as is the mother, so is her daughter. You see that thing? The proverb is, as is the mother, so is the daughter, like mother, like daughter. And that's what you are seeing. You're going to see some more of that. Go ahead. Verse 45. Come on. Thou art thy mother's daughter. You are your mother's daughter. You hold on. You are your mother's daughter. You just like your mother. Okay, go ahead. That loathed her husband and the children. She hates her husband and she hates the children. So if she hates her husband and she hates the children, she hates her father as well. That's why she'll become her father's happiness. Okay, go ahead. And thou art the sister of thy sisters which mm. loathe their husbands and their children. You see that thing? He says, thou art the sister of thy sisters which loathe their husbands and their children. Because remember, these women, they, especially if you notice, like especially these teenage girls, they hate their fathers and they all seem to find each other. They all seem to find each other in a group. They know, yeah, I hate my dad. You know, he's such so stuck up. He's so like this, disrespecting their fathers. And another one will also say the same thing. Yo, my father's like this. My dad is in, mm, mm, speaking evil of their fathers. 
You understand? And these black ashy teenage girls, they always seem to find each other. You understand? That's what we're reading it. And when they grow older, guess what they do? I get now their coochie has being abused. They're dealing with all these different men. So there are all these different spirits on them of these different men that they deal with. Now when they come together, they have kids. They pour the same demonic spirit on the kids. They hate their children as well. You see that thing? Go ahead. Your mother was an Hittite and your father mm. an Amorite. You see that the Lord is every whenever we do evil, the Lord is always cursing us out with, with like the Hamites. You see, he's calling us Hamites, you dusty Hamites to me, the way you behave. You ever see how these Hamites behave? They are filthy. The, guess what? Hamites. Now we become we be, we acting like them now. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Now let's go back to the video. Let's go back to the video, okay? I want you to have fun, baby. I'll talk to you later. Now she's coming to her father now, as per that Jezebel mother of hers instructed her, right? Okay. Look at the way she's dressed here. Yeah. Horish apparent. You understand? She's a man. This is not a woman. This is a man right here. You understand? Some of the sisters in the truth, they are like this, but in the spirit, because they are hiding behind the long dresses. You understand? Feminist behavior. Okay. Dad, are you home? Over here, Lena. Oh, Dad, um, this weekend I'm going out with a few friends. So can you put a little extra cash on my debit card? Plus, I want to do a little shopping for a few things, so make sure you make it a lot. Hello, Lena. That's not the way you ask for things. You don't come here and order up money from me like that. How about a proper greeting? Hi. Right, you are my father. You can't make like this our... stuff up, yeah. Right there. Look at the level of disrespect. Hmm? Listen to her. You see how she spoke to her father just now? Let me go back a little bit. And some of you sisters have corrected you about that thing. Some of you getting it right, some of you are not. I need one. You don't come here and order up money from me like that. How about a proper greeting? Hi. Right, you are my father. Like, I really need one. God, okay, dad, hi. Who do you think you are talking to me like this? Like what, dad? What's really gonna happen? You don't control me any more than you did my mother. Lena, you are my daughter, and I want to tolerate this disrespect. I mean it. Really? Or? <laughs> you, you know what, dad? You're <laughs> such a little bitch. Just like mom always says you are. A bitch. I'm a bitch. No, Lena, I'm not a bitch. I'm a man. I'm the man who provided everything you ever had while your mother did nothing your entire life. I'm that man who bought you that brand new car you're driving. I'm the same man who put money aside for your college education. Look at me. Look at me, Lena. I am that man who has always been part of your life, even though your mother tried to keep me out of your life. I am the man who loved you ever since you were born. I even cut the cord that separated you from your mother. I even loved your mother. It doesn't matter how much she acted out until I couldn't take it no more. But above all, I am your father, Lena. Until you learn how to respect me as such. You're going to get out of this house and go back to that angry woman you were born from. Get out of this house! That's right. Oh, please. Now. Okay, that's it on there. Now, what I'm showing you, you see that thing right there? That's what we're reading here in Serac. Okay? That's what we're reading here. Read again. Sarah 22, verse 5. Okay, read verse 4 and 5 together. 
because spiritually, this is how these the, our sisters in this in the in the truth, this is how they behave. Like that sister in the world. Spiritual. Okay, read it. Verse 4 and 5. Come on. Ecclesiasticus chapter 22, verse 4. Right. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. Read. But she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. You see that thing? But she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. That child right there, that, that's fair, because she's a spherenist, okay? She is a, she's a father's heaviness, okay? Ray, because you see even, I mean, the father was even, he was even merciful enough to say, you know what, get out of this house. You know what, I take the car and go. There is no way, I'm just talking for me. I will never buy my child a car like that. Never, never. I'll never get buy my daughter a car like that. She disrespect me, she will leave the car keys right there and walk. It's very simple equation. Okay. Read on. Ecclesiasticus chapter 22, verse 5. Go ahead. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband. But they both shall be despised. But they both you shall think despise this her. Is bad. It says, but they both shall despise it. They are going to hate her guts because of the way she behaves. You understand? She's a disrespectful child. She's disrespectful. You understand? She lives dishonestly. Jump down to verse 9. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 9. Read. Right. If children live honestly and have wherewithal, they shall cover the baseness of their parents. You see what the Bible is saying? If children live honestly and have wherewithal, meaning they have the basic things in life. That's the wherewithal. All that. Give me that in Sirach 38. Okay, is it Sirach 39, verse 28? I think it's 39, 28. Okay, read it. Th 39, verse 26. Sirach 39, 26. It's not in my notes. Let me write it down real quick. Okay, read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 39, verse 26. Read. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, mm -hmm. iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil, and clothing. You see that thing? Uh, these are the principal things for the whole use of man's life. Water, fire, iron, salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and blood of the grape, and oil, and clothing. Wish he has all of those things. You understand? Go ahead. All these things are for good to the godly. Uh -huh. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. You see that thing? All these things are good for the godly, to the godly. But to, it says, so to the sinners, they are turned into evil. That's what you just saw there. Now those things are turned into evil. Look at the way she's demanding these things, like she deserves it. The way she's talking to her father. You see this, the way she's talking to her father like this, most of our sisters today, I'm talking from the young ones to the older ones, that's how they talk to their fathers, that's how they talk to their uncles, that's how they talk to their husbands, that's how they talk to their brothers. That's the mindset, you understand? They are expecting the father to submit to the daughter. Are you kidding me? Hell no, that will never go down right yet. The father will never submit to their daughter. What the hell is this? You understand? That, 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 that only happens in the black community because why? We departed from the laws of God. Listen, that thing really gets to my stomach. It makes me sick to my stomach. I just want to vomit on you. I'm going to tell you straight up. Okay, read again. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39. Verse 27. Read. All these things are for good to the godly. Read. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. You see that thing right there? To the sinners, they are turned into evil. Now, guess what happens? Because remember, you see what she was, she is asking money from her father to go and, and what, and deal with her friends. And she lied to her father, but she told the mother the truth. Listen, I'm going out for two days to Vegas. Guess what she's going to do? Have sex? You see how she's dressed? 
how she walks. She's shaking her bumps, walking and mincing as she goes. That's what she was doing. You understand? So what, guess what's going on? Now, the father, the, if she told the father the truth, the father was not going to agree with that. You understand? But she listened to her mother. So it is today in the black community. The children, especially these teenage girls, they don't listen to their fathers. They listen to their mothers. They hate their fathers. So that they can go out with boyfriends and be sexed out. You understand? So that's what that's why that's what Njolo is all about. That's what Njola is all about. That's why being a feminist is all about. You understand? Letting men, they sexing you, abusing your coochie. Because you are a skeleton yourself. Ustrat mate. Okay. Now watch this. Give me, give me Exodus 22 16. Because this what we're reading here is what we just saw. Now watch this. Exodus 22 16. Because that boy, she's because the mother asked, is she 18 years old yet? She said, no, she's two months away from being 18 years old. So she's not 18 years old. He's not 18. You see that thing? Okay. Exodus 22, verse 16. Because these are teenagers. All right. Read it. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Go ahead. And if a man entice a mate that is not betrothed and lies, hey. he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Now, what I want to show you with this verse it says this is when a man steps up to a, a, a sister. That is not betrothed. Shows the sister is single, meaning what? She's still under her father's house. That's what that means. Read it again so we get it. Verse 16. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Go ahead. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed mm. and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So this sister is still under her father's roof. Because it says, if a man entice a maid, we are share. I give him jolo. We are jolo ananish. Yes, it says, if a man entice a maid, that is not betrothed. I mean, this woman is still under her father's roof. She is still her father's property. Understand that, okay? And lie with her. She sleeps. She sleeps with you. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. But they don't do that. They don't make you their wife. They don't make you their wife. They turn you into Mgwanti. They turn you into a Svevenist because you are one. I agree you allow the, the man to sex you. Yes. So now what we're reading here says that is not betrothed and lie with it. Now, let's just pause right there. You are not betrothed. You are under your father's house and they lie with you. Get to Tommy 22. Okay. Get that into Tommy 22. Watch this. Tommy chapter 22 and verse... Verse 28, Deuteronomy 22, verse 28. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 28. Read. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and mm. lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found. And they be what? And they be found. Because right here, they are not supposed to be found. Because they are not supposed to be doing this. When a man steps up to you, a sister, guess where the sister is supposed to send that man to? The sister is supposed to send that man to her father. Why? Because she knows the law. She knows that she's still her father's property. She's still her father's possession. You understand that? Exodus 20, 17. Let's get that real quick. She's still her father's possession. She's still her father's property. And she grows up knowing that. So when a man steps up to her, she said, no, 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 don't talk to me. Go talk to my father. You understand? If your father is not around, she's not around, he's passed on and so forth, you have the leadership in the church. The leadership in the church, they're the ones, no, 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 go talk to the leadership. You want to talk to me about marriage and so forth? No problem. Go talk to leadership. And if leadership agrees, then the next thing, they'll tell you what you must do, the next steps. That's a responsible daughter right there. That's a daughter that lives honestly. The reason why I'm getting on the sisters is because you're the one that is going to end up with a short end of the stick. Okay, read it. Exodus 20, verse 17. 
Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Read. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Nor anything that is your neighbor's. Anything that goes into what? You, the children, your daughter. You understand? The, a daughter is a father's possession until she gets married. When she gets married, she is her husband's possession. Understand that. From your father's house, you go straight to your husband's house. There's no in between or boyfriend. No, no, no. Mm -mm. There's no such thing in the Bible. There's no pit stop your boyfriend before you get to your husband. No. From your father's house, you go straight to your husband's house. You understand? Now, go back. Um, go back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 22, verse 28. Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 28. Go ahead. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is mm. not betrothed, a and virgin, hold, on. A, hold on, a virgin is a young, marriageable woman. That's what a virgin is. Go ahead. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, mm. and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found. So what's going on here is that this brother was able to step up to this sister and manage to do what? To get her pants down. You understand? To uncover her nakedness. She was able to do that because the sister decided to what? To disrespect her father's rules. She decided to play the whore in her father's house. So if you choose not to listen to your father, you listen to that wicked Negro, right? If you don't listen to your father, what makes you think that you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to listen, you're going to be able to overpower a Negro who doesn't have your best interest at heart? What makes you think you'll be able to overcome him? What makes you think you'll be able to see his tricks from afar? You're not going to see them. He's going to body bag you. Yeah. He's going to body bag you because you think you're clever. Because look, look, let me show you what happens. You understand? Let me show, I'm show you what happened in the past. Give me the book of Sirach 42, verse 10. Sirach 42, verse 10. Watch this. Okay, Sirach 42 and verse 10. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verse 10. Read. In her virginity, mm. lest she should be defiled and gotten with child. Lest she should be what? Her, lest she should be defiled. That you should be defiled. Remember what we read in Deuteronomy 22, the law. It says, if the man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, meaning what? She's still under her father's house. She's still her father's possession. She's not married yet, but she belongs to her father. Then it says, in her virginity, a virgin that is not betrothed, meaning she's still under her father's house, lest she should be defiled. Okay, come on and gotten with child in her father's house. You see that he's letting you know, this woman is still in her father's house. What is she doing in her father's house? Playing the whore. That's why it says defiled here. She's having sex under her father's roof. She was not given, her hand was not given in marriage, but now she's playing the whore in her father's house, bringing shame to her father's house. That's what the black woman is doing today. And the government is promoting it. Social media is promoting it. You understand? DSTV is promoting it. Date My Family is promoting all of those garbage. That's why there's horror in the black community, in the nation of Israel. And these women that are promoting these shows, and so forth, yes, they are the ones that are sponsoring these shows. They are pushing whoredom in the black community. And nobody is correcting them. We're going to correct them this day in the spirit of Christ. No fear, no favor. Okay, read again, verse 10. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verse 10. Read. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. And gotten with child in her father's house. Now watch this. All that gets around 26. Lest she should be defiled 
and gotten with child in her father's house. Now watch this. Psalm 26 verse 10. Now read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 10. Go ahead. If thy daughter be shameless, mm -hmm. keep her straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. You see what the Bible is saying? Because she, how did she get defiled in her father's house? Because she's shameless. Who jump on my fence, Agrian? Kill ninja. Kill ninja, Agrian. Kill GI Joe. It says, if thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straight, meaning lock her ass up in the house. Lest she abuse herself. We don't, the reason why we, we want she must be kept in straightly is so that she don't abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Meaning what? That abuse comes into what? Men abusing her vagina. Okay? That's how she will get defiled in her father's house. That's what the Bible is saying right there. Read the next verse. Watch this. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 11. Read. Watch over an impudent eye mm. and, and marvel not if she trespass against thee. You see what the Bible is saying? Because verse 10 is as if your daughter be shameless. Meaning what? You allow her to have a boyfriend. You allow her to go out on parties. You allow her to go to the metric dancing. It's the big thing in South Africa, this metric dance thing. You know where I go to bashing. Now today, is the so-called New Year, New Year's Eve, 10th month of the year that we're in. Now, they allow them to go over no rilo how long while. That's what they say. They get sexed, these girls, because they get drunk, because they disrespect their fathers, especially their fathers. Okay? It's, uh, here it says, that's the shamelessness. Okay? It says, lest she abuse herself through over much liberty. She allows, she's allowed to go out. She's allowed to have a boyfriend. You understand? But it says, watch over an impudent eye. What does that mean, impudent? Because that's not a regular Negro word. What does that mean, impudent? Let's read the definition. Read the definition of impudent. Read it. The definition of impudent. Go ahead. Adjective. Mm. Not showing due respect for another person. Impertinent. You see that thing? Not showing due respect for another person. Impertinent. That's what it means here when it says, watch over an impudent eye. Meaning what? Watch over a disrespectful daughter. That's what we read in Sirach 22, verse 4 and 5. Second Ezra 14, verse 13 and 14. You understand? Now let's read the synonyms. Read that. Cheeky. Cheeky. Okay, read that. Audacious. Read that. Audacious. Let's read the test. Let's see what audacious means. Yes. Read that. Read that. Yeah. Definition. No, de definition two. Read definition two. Definition of audacious. Read. Showing an impudent lack of respect. You see that thing? Showing an impudent lack of respect. Meaning she's bold. She don't give a damn. Because why? She's a shameless daughter. Now read that. Because we read this word earlier in Sarah 22 verse 4. Bold. What? Bold. Bold. Read that now. Fearless. Fearless. This fearlessness is goes into what? She don't fear the Lord. She don't fear the Lord. Okay, now read that one. Devil may care. Devil may care because she worships Satan. Okay, read that. Daredevil. Daredevil. You see that thing right there? Daredevil. Okay, now watch this. Read that. Presumptuous. Presumptuous. Self willed. Read that. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. Now read that. Unmannerly. She has no bedside manners. You see that thing? No bedside manners whatsoever. Okay, now read that. Rude. Rude. You see that thing? Now read that. Smart ass. She's a smart ass. 
Okay, meaning what? Dumb. That's what it means. This smartest, it means dumb. She's weak-minded. Okay, now, let's go back. Go back to Sarah 26, verse 11. Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 11. Go ahead. Watch over an impudent eye. Uh -huh. And marvel not if she trespass against thee. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, watch over a disrespectful eye. It says, and marvel not if she trespass against you. We know some of you, we're not going to be surprised when you disrespect, when you what, when you what? What does the Bible say? It says, when she trespass against thee. Because you're not trespassing against us. You're trespassing against what the Lord is saying. And the Lord will surely bring vengeance on you. Because there is a God. Okay? Now watch this. Now, you see what we're reading here? It says she's shameless, right? Because she's still in her father's house. She's being defiled. Okay? Watch the next verse. Verse 12. Come on. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he when? has found a fountain. Come on. And drink of every water near her. Mm. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. He says, by every hedge will she sit down and open a quiver against every arrow. We read the scriptures all the time, right? I want to show you something with this verse. When you are, as a sister, when you are given, because I'm dealing with the sisters now, when you are given a command, an instruction to do, you don't do it. You know what the, the, what, 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 what the sin you are in is? Idolatry. Idolatry, because it says, stubbornness is as a sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. I'm paraphrasing it. Let's read it, actually. First Samuel 15, 23. Let's get that real quick. I'm going to show you something with this verse. First book of Samuel. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. Go ahead. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Come on. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Stop right there. So rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. So a sister that's rebellious, that's a witch. Okay? That's a witch right there. Kimulo, you are loyal. And okay, and go ahead and stubborn what? And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Now, these two things rebellion is witchcraft, stubbornness is idolatry. So, when you are given an instruction, you don't do it, you are a witch and you are an idolater. You practice idolatry. So, what we read in here in Sarah 26, it says, Lest she should be defiled. This right here is the next sin that you are going to be in. Get Ezekiel 23. Okay. You see, I'm going to show you something with this verse. Ezekiel 23. Okay. Ezekiel 23, verse 37. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 37. Go ahead. That they have committed adultery. They've committed and adultery. So adultery. Adultery, that's what we read in Sarah 26, verse 10 down. Sarah 42, verse 10. De Exodus 22, 16. Deuteronomy 22, verse 28. That's what we read. That's adultery. Okay? Go ahead. And blood is in their hands. Because once they commit adultery, they fall pregnant. Guess what they do? They fall pregnant. They commit abortions. Right. And with their idols, have they committed adultery? Now stop right there. It says, and with their idols, have they committed adultery? Now I'm going to tell you something with this. You are given a command, you don't follow it. You are stubborn, you are rebellious. You are in the midst of idolatry. What is the next thing that follows? Adultery. That's what comes next. That's what comes next. Adult, you will commit adultery. It's not a matter of if or maybe. No, you will commit adultery. That's what you don't understand. They're, listen, the law is spiritual. You, you are stubborn, you are rebellious, you, you are an idolater. Guess what's going to happen to you? You will commit adultery. And guess what the next thing you'll do? The next thing that you'll partake in is murder because you'll eventually fall pregnant. 
then you say, I don't want nobody to see that I'm pregnant, or I don't want the leadership to know that I committed adultery, so I'm going to kill the baby. That's the next sin you will commit. Adultery followed by what? Abortion. Murder. It is the dominant effect. But some of you, you are too clever for this Bible. You understand? You are too clever. You understand? You are too advanced for all of us. No problem. There is a God. Okay? Now watch this. Now, because you don't want to, you disrespect your fathers, here's what happens. Because a Negro will step up to you. Go back to Exodus 22, 16. Exodus chapter 22 that Negro, verse. That Negro, right, that Negro is Satan. That's Satan right there. Exodus 22, 16. I want you to read that again. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Read. And if a man entice a mate that is not betrothed. You know what? And you know what? Wait, 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 wait. Remember what we read, right? Go back to Sarah 42. I want to I wanna deal with something else. Sarah 42 and verse 10. Because it says, remember what we read in Sarah 26 is how she gets defiled. Because we read in Sarah 42 verse 9, I mean 42 verse 10, that is in a virginity lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. Sarah 26 verse 10 to 12 explains to you how she gets defiled. And when she does get defiled, Ezekiel 23 37 tells you what she does with the fruit of her womb. She will kill it. Okay? Now watch this. I'm going to give you an example. Okay, read that. Sarah 42 verse 10. Ecclesiasticus chapter 42 verse 10. Read. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. Now she's falling her... pregnant in her father's house because she's playing the whore in her father's house. I'm going to give you an example. Get that in Genesis 34. Okay. I'm going to show you what our, what our sister Dina, she got defiled. Because of what? Too much idleness. Okay, watch this. Genesis 34, verse 1 and 2. Read that. Genesis chapter 34, verse 1. Read. And Dina, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Because I get it, you don't want to listen to us. You say, no, you know what? You know, I miss having girlfriends. I want to go out. You know, I want to see what the daughters of the land are doing. I'm tired of wearing these long dresses. I want to talk to the people on the ground. That's the mindset, because leadership is telling us what to do. Don't talk to those Negroes right there. Don't talk to those sisters right there, because they are rolling with the wrong crowd. Roll with the sisters in the truth. She don't want to hear that. Go ahead. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. You see what happened? Too much idleness. Not listening. That was the, that was the judgment. It says what? A, he took hold of her and lay with her and defiled our sister. Some of you sisters, you're going to be defiled the same way. Because if you disrespect your father, guess what's going to happen? You are vulnerable now. A Negro will step up to you. Get Exodus 22, 16. Because the minute you don't follow the command what that your fathers are giving you, as it is written in the Bible, you are, guess what? You hate yourself. You are leaving yourself to be vulnerable. Guess what? The Negro, Satan will allow the Negro to step up to you. Get that in Exodus 22, 16. Read it. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Go ahead. And if a man entice a mate that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So the Lord is telling you that the, the, you're supposed to send them to your father because you are your father's property. When you don't, it's guaranteed that man is going to sleep with you. Watch this. Let me share my screen now. Let me play this video. I, wanna, I want you to see this thing. Okay. This is that horrid show called Date My Fam. I want you to see this thing. This is the type of Negro that is going to step up to you. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. 10. Read. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and such mm. of heart. 
That's the this this woman right here. She's a harlot, and she's got a tire of an harlot. You see the type of dress that she's got on. She's surprised how this brother is talking to her. This brother also, he's a homemonger. You understand? The only thing he's interested in is what he wants to what he wants to hit it and quit it. That's all he cares about. Go ahead. She is loud and stubborn. Okay, yeah, that's it on that. Yeah, that's it on that. That's it on that. Let's go back. You see how uh, people today they are showing their rebellion towards the most high God this day. But brothers, so sisters, you don't understand the type of men you are going to meet. You don't listen to your fathers. These are the type of men that you are going to meet. I'm telling you straight. This is not a matter of if or maybe. No, it will happen if you don't get your mind right. Okay. Now watch this. Let's look at the next video. Give me the book of Timothy, right? Give me first Timothy. You see, sisters, they believe these lies. Yeah? They believe these liars. They believe these whoremongering men. They believe them. Okay. Second Timothy 2. Second Timothy 2, verse 22. Read that. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Go ahead. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You see that thing? This Negro is not calling out of the from the is not calling on the Lord out of a pure heart. He's not calling the Lord, period. He's saying his syllable. syllable. That's it on that. James 4, verse 4. Let's get there. I'm going to show you what the Apostle James said about this thing. Because what you are seeing here, okay? That's the South African pandemic, like. That's the pandemic that has hit our, our neighborhood, that has hit Kokasi everywhere. From the youngest one to the older ones, that's how they think. That's where their mindset is all. Njolo, okay? Now, James 4, verse 4. Watch this. James, chapter 4, verse 4. Go ahead. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Do right you not? An adulterer, hold on. He says, ye adulterers. An adulterer is a what? Is a man that sleeps around. That's an adulterer right there with a hair that looks like a peacock. Okay? And, and, and what? He says, ye adulterers and what? Ye adulterers and adulteresses. That sister right there, this sister, she's an adulteress. She is an adulteress. Go ahead. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is image with God? That the what? That the friendship of the world is enmity with God. What is the friendship that they have? Mujol, Mujolana, to have sex outside of marriage. That's the friendship of the world. They have a friendship of the world. Mujolo is the is the friendship of the world, which is the enemy of God. Mujolan, boyfriend and girlfriend, that's the friendship of the world. And that right there is against God. Read that again. He says, What? He says, Know ye not? Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Read. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You see that thing right there? If you so ever therefore will be a friend of the world is, M, is an enemy of God. Because an adulterer and adulteresses, what are they called today? Boyfriend and girlfriend. That's what an adulterer is, a boyfriend, an adulteress, a girlfriend. Their relationship is a, is a what? Is their relationship is a friendship of the world. So they have made friendship with the world. And by so doing, they become an enemy to God. You see that thing? Watch this. Now give me Nahum chapter 1. Nahum 1 verse 2. Nahum chapter 1 verse 2. Watch this. Nahum 1 and verse 2. Let's read that thing. Nahum chapter 1 verse 2. Go ahead. God is jealous. God is jealous. And the minute you make a friendship with the world, they were making the most of God jealous. Go ahead. And the Lord revenged, revenged. The Lord will bring, hold on. The Lord will bring revenge on the friendship that you have with the world, which is called boyfriend and girlfriend. Mujolo. Go ahead. The Lord revenged and is furious. 
the Lord will bring forth will bring forth payback, which is judgment, and the Lord is furious, meaning the Lord is mad as hell. Go ahead. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And you see what the Lord will do? Hold on. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. He's going to tell you who his adversaries are. Go ahead. Keep reading. And he reserves wrath for his enemies. You see what the Lord does? The Lord reserves wrath, meaning what? Righteous anger. He reserves righteous anger for his enemies. Who are his enemies? Go back to James 4, verse 4. The Lord will reserve, will reserve vengeance and wrath for his enemies. Who are his enemies? James 4. Let's go back there. Boyfriend and girlfriend. James 4, verse 4. Read what you got. James chapter 4, verse 4. Read. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, mm -hmm. know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Read. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's it right there. So what you are seeing here on Date My Family, they are what? They are, they are God's enemies. They are making themselves an enemy of God. Because what? They have a friendship with the world. And the, the world will give them license to become God's enemies. Get that in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 15, verse 20. Sarah 15, verse 20. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 15, verse 20. Go ahead. He has commanded no man to do wickedly. Mm -hmm. Neither has he given any man license to sin. You see that thing? The, so the, the, the show date my family, that's license for people to commit adultery. Our people to make friendship with the world and to make themselves enemies of God. So give, me, give me Isaiah 63, verse 10. Isaiah 63, verse 10. Okay, read that. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. Go ahead. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Read. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and mm. he fought against them. You see what the Lord did? The minute we make friendships of the world, like for instance, Right now, our people, they are celebrating, quote, unquote, New Year's Eve, right? They are friends with the world. They are, guess what? They are enemies of God. They celebrate Christmas. That's a friendship of the world. It's friendship with the world. They are God's enemies. They celebrate Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, so on and so forth. They break the Sabbath. They are God's enemies. And God will, what? will reserve evil and wrath and vengeance against them. Okay? Get Lamentations too. Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 4. Watch this. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 4. Go ahead. He has bent his bow like an enemy. God bent his bow like an enemy against us. Go ahead. He stood with his right hand as an adversary. God became our adversary like we read in Nahum 1 verse 2. Go ahead and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. Rain. He poured out his fury like fire. You see what he did to us? Go ahead. The Lord was, an, was as an enemy. The Lord was what? The Lord was as an enemy. The Lord was as an enemy against us. He was an enemy to us. Why? Because we made friendship with the world. That's why the Lord became our enemy. You understand? Because we don't listen. So what I'm showing you here is go back to Sirac 7 now. Get Sirac 7. Now read verse 24. Read verse 25. Ecclesiastes 7 to you. I'm almost done. Sirac 7 verse 25. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 25. Go ahead. Marry thy daughter mm -hmm. and so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. Go ahead. But give her to a man of understanding. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, marry your daughter. The father's job is to prepare their daughter for marriage. And before you are prepared for marriage, you must be taught how to deal with the house, 
how to be clean, how to follow instruction, how to have respect, how to make sure that your house is in order, all of that, how to follow instruction to the T. As before you get married, you are taught how to listen. Your job is to learn the art of listening. That's your job. You understand? It says, marry thy daughter, and so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. Because marriage is a weighty matter. It's not a, it's not a light matter. Marriage, a good marriage will build a nation. A bad marriage will destroy a nation. Look at our nation the way that it is. It's destroyed because of what? Bad marriages, you understand? And toxic marriages. That's why nations are, are destroyed. And no marriage at all. And if they do take place, they don't last six months. You understand? It says, but give it to a man of understanding. Our job is to prepare you for marriage and make sure that you know the scriptures, you understand them, you apply them. Secondly, we must give you to a man of understanding. That means that man, leadership must prove that brother. Leadership must prove that brother to see, does he have good works? Does he have works in the body? Does he have a good report? Does he have a good name? Is he putting in the work? So on and so forth. We said, that's a good brother right there. He has a job. He does not have, he's not violent, so on and so forth. He has to be vetted thoroughly and properly because marriage is a weighty matter. So when you don't want to listen to that, you don't want a good marriage. You want a toxic one. You, you want a marriage of Adam and Eve where they just blame each other in the marriage. Or you want the marriage of what Ahab and Jezebel where the woman is running the house and the man is got his balls in a woman's purse. Some of you, that's the type of marriage you want based on how you behave right now. You understand? So you choose which type of marriage you want. You understand? You want the marriage of Abraham and Sarah, or you want the marriage of um, the marriage of, of Tobit and Anna, or you want the marriage of Jezebel and Ahab, or the marriage of Adam and Eve after they sinned, when things started to go downhill. The choice is yours. You understand? That's what we're preparing you for. We're preparing you for that day. I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the most High God. Let's break bread, okay? Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, it to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.